sort of our recap. <laughs> so we, okay, we're ready to go. Uh, okay. So with the yeah last session we went we went to Yulgamot, um, which is a little rock floating in the astral plane that there's like a city built in, um, and part of why you went there is just because like it's a place that allows you to easily reach other places in the astral plane if you have like a guide which you guys do you guys have a uh, yeah. saga guide right now um but it's also a place where like there was like it was somewhere where you guys could gather information as well um because all you really knew at that point was well Aridel's on the astral plane somewhere um and that's that's all you guys had to go on so um you guys went to I guess first you guys checked like this place that's kind of on the bottom uh, uh side of the um or like kind of like off to the side of it of the uh like away from the where the people are all living and whatnot um called uh what was it called I have it written down somewhere here but um it's it's basically this place where this where the star dead which is um astral travelers that have been separated from their uh, corporeal body which is what Aridel is um, it's like a place that they kind of congregate to and the thing is that the ones that go there they they usually end up like um, drifting into becoming quintessence and like adding on to the um, onto the rock basically like they they dissolve into in yeah into quintessence so if he had been there it's kind of one of those it was unlikely because if he'd been there it was like generally speaking probably a problem that was solving itself then um but he's not there so the next place you guys went to was a was silka's seekers was the name of it um hmm. which was and you guys actually met silka um who basically specializes in finding lost people and things and um she didn't tell you exactly where um where to find Aridel, but she told you who would probably be able to tell you, which is a really, really old um astral Leviathan. Right. Um, I don't know I don't know if I mentioned this last session, but you guys actually might have seen some astral Leviathans in Yulgamot. Um like they people will sometimes use them as like uh to like get around or like move stuff like they you'll sometimes see them with like harnesses on um but yeah the one you guys are going to this one specific one because um a astral leviathan has kind of this ability to remember any where they've been and to be able to like they have like a connection to it where they can they can um effectively like scry on not quite scry it's, it's more like like they don't they don't see it, but they just know like what's going on in within the astral plane. So basically, um, because this is like one of the oldest uh astral leviathans that anybody knows about, he's been pretty much everywhere on the astral plane. So he'd be the one most likely to know where Aridel is. Because most likely Aridel's somewhere he's been before. Now, do we know if astral leviathans are chatty, talkative? Um, I think you guys didn't really like the DC to have knowledge on it was uh, really high, so nobody but... knew for sure. So we but... might die. Okay. <laughs> you guys do know, like you guys have been told at least that they're they are intelligent. Um. Um, so yeah, like they're like relatively chatty, I guess. Well, we have a chance then. Intelligent things at least like to talk to their food first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And so yeah, you guys set out to go find them. Uh, you guys hired a Shulsaga guide. Um, was I smart and recorded his name in my notes. He might not have ever given you a name, I guess. Yeah, honestly, might not have a name. 
No, right? the Shulsaga all have names. So the uh, Shulsaga okay. has a name. The um the Shoki uh Psychopomp never gave you a name and uh maybe doesn't have a name, although uh Silka referred to him as Show. But that's probably just short for Shoki. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if the guide ever gave you a name. If he did give you a name, I didn't write it down. <laughs> so um, <laughs> That's yeah, it. He, I'm looking at the VOD. He might have a new name now. <laughs> Stan. <laughs> His name is Stan. Um they do actually have like a list of like common Shulsaga names, and I'm pretty sure if I had I would have had picked one from here. You would have picked Stan, I know. Um, yeah. You know, I haven't defaulted to Stan for a while. It's been a long while. <laughs> yeah. That was one of the NPC names that we assigned. Many to... NPCs. <laughs> yeah, but it was specifically we had Stanley Balboa in uh, yeah. Second Darkness. That's true. <laughs> I can't remember who the other one was. One of them was Stanley Balboa, and then the other one was... I can't remember. <laughs> They were just like the random, they were just random, like, uh, like People. casino guards or whatever. Yeah. But they, like, rolled really well and helped us in, like, this big fight that broke out at the casino. So they ended up becoming named characters. <laughs> they became NPCs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like, when we left, we're like, well, we'll leave, Vel we'll leave Stanley and. I can't uh, remember the Arch. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was something weird, I feel like. Like a little more weird than Stanley Balboa. I so bad wish we had like our second darkness campaign like recorded. Mm. <laughs> because it was so like interesting. It's such a like callback for me. Cause that was like the second main campaign yeah. I went through. It was like it the was... first one we recorded, but we we didn't have the whole thing in there. It started at episode yeah. eleven. But yeah. yeah. We missed some of the best just... parts. It was like my second campaign, like big campaign, so I was a little bit better, mm -hmm. like more knowledgeable. Like the first one, I I feel like Matt kind of just let us do whatever we wanted. <laughs> we had like super <laughs> overpowered characters and like we just kind of survived. But the second one was I had a character die in that one, and then <laughs> remade it and stuff like that. Yeah, he was a. He like he I died to a banshee. <laughs> the banshee fight. I just take the, the banshee while the everybody banshee. else was like Oh man. Weird. Yeah. We super I, like over prepped for the banshee power. fight. Yeah. <laughs> well we we went in there, my guy was like the only person that's able to like was able to like do any damage against it. And so like everybody else was failing their will saves and it was just me basically taking <laughs> like fighting off the banshee by myself. And basically, I got it. As was, you like, do. One, one like, hit away. Yeah, it was like one hit away from being down, and it killed me, and then they finished it off. And like, yeah, and then somehow they brought me back to life. We put but, Death Ward on everyone in the party. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. we had um, that one NPC doing like counter song as well. Mm hmm. Which helped a lot, and then also I ca I created a force weapon and gave it to our brawler, which was Secrets character. Yeah. yeah. And just said, "Here you go, beat it up with this force sword that does full damage to uh, yeah. incorporeal creatures." Yeah. Anyway, we were equipped. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was just one of those. Yeah, I have a. I always seem to be a the like take character. That just goes into the battle and is like, all right, everybody else survive. I'll I'll die if I need to. <laughs> it's an important role. Well, yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, um, the only other thing that happened that session, which was that you guys did get ambushed on the way. Um, mm. while you guys were going, there was a spot where the um, like the sort of like currents that the Shul Saga is kind of using to like get you guys there uh yeah. hit like a dead zone and he was like this isn't normal like somebody must have 
something was to cause this, and it turned out it, he was right. It was um, a psychometal, I believe is what they're called. Psychomental, sorry. Um, it's sort of like a swarm of thoughts taken shape, um, kind of like an elemental, and uh, but, you know, thoughts, and they wanted to eat your thoughts. So uh, they were kind of rough because some of you guys don't have, like, magic weapons that can interact with them, and right. uh, so it's really hard to even hurt them. And, uh, yeah, they kind of ran around and tried to sap some of your thoughts. The only person I think that fell victim to it was Billy. Um, mm -hmm. Had some of, his, some of his thoughts stolen away from him. So he's feeling a little uh, not himself, feeling a little out, out of it. Um, but, you know, it should, that should heal with time when you guys are back in, with time. Um, yeah, because you guys are in the astral plane, there's no time. Also, there's not actual gravity. There's, like, subjective gravity. So kind of mm -hmm. gravity is where you want it to be. And you can refocus and um, effectively, like, direct where your gravity is by making a, I believe yeah. it's a wisdom check. Yeah, it's a wisdom check. Um, and if you fail it, then uh, the first you time, then you, can, you can do it again with like a bonus. Like after you give it mm. some time, it gets a little easier. If you're bad enough at it, then you basically have no control or you just fall wherever. But <laughs> if you're like yeah. really, really bad, but it's, it's pretty hard because you get a plus six bonus on the second try. Uh, that makes me think onward. is there has to be a creature that can mess with that, like mess with your perception of gravity in this yeah, place. Yeah. They could just be like, oh, you're going to fall. And yeah, well, start, and even honestly, you just start falling. The psychomentals actually kind of do that in their own way, too, because mm. they do yeah. the negative level, I think, applies mm. to uh, the yeah. wisdom checks. Not hundred percent sure on that. I can't remember if they applied ability checks, but anything that does wisdom damage or drain would as well. I do have one question for you. So I have one favorite enemy as animals, just because that's kind of like my guy's backstory. Mm -hmm. But I do have a second favorite enemy, and I have no clue what to choose. I would like going into the campaign. I know we're gonna be fighting the dragon, but I don't think my guy would have favorite enemy dragon, and I just one your opinion on the second favorite enemy um his backstory is he basically came here looking for his mom he grew up like as a hunter basically just killing animals so that's why his first favorite enemy is animals but like he's been here a little bit maybe i don't he, think like... we've really talked a whole lot about like how your mother ended up on the astral plane either though like the yeah because it, if that's the case it might make sense to have like a favorite enemy that's like an outsider or something yeah um i'd, I'd probably do outsider just uh what's like a, this plane like a chaotic outsider maybe or something chaotic. yeah we'll do that well this is a neutral plane but um, I, yeah so I, I don't know but yeah, like maybe maybe it makes sense to have like you know against chaotic outsiders. Yep. Plus, yeah, I think always. I think you'll get some practice out, or some use out of that. Too. Yeah, like, that, that that's in, the main further down the campaign. That was the, that was the main reason is like I don't want to just like choose like two and then not even use them. Oh type yeah. Of thing. But I also don't want to make my guy like oh dragon. And, like have him be like yeah crazy. i mean like, you, you know could I mean? also take the generic option too and just be like i'm dead like that'll yeah. probably be fine too um you know what i'll do animals and orts somebody Orc. joined who's there that would be me oh hey welcome yay you just missed the recap but yeah we'll do we'll do orc because of his have kind of been working on his backstory okay so Orc is his second favorite enemy. That one will have double bonus. All right, so yeah, as uh, sh your Shulsaga guide continues, uh, Derek, you won't have to remember the Shulsaga's name by chance, do you? 
I don't think I was there for that. <laughs> okay. I like I said, I couldn't remember if I actually gave him a name or had it. Well, I'm I think I gave him a name, but I don't remember if he like introduced himself. I'm sure he did, but he's gonna have a new name probably because I don't remember what it was and my notes apparently I didn't write it down. Or if I did write it down, I like didn't save my notes or something. All you have as so you have Shoki, which is the like mage that's with us, right? The Shoki is a psychopomp, actually. Yeah. That, that's a type of psychopomp he is. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you have. I don't think you gave us a name for. for the I, I don't remember. Yeah. His name is Abri. Abri. Ibri. Ibri. Baba says you have the game paused. Uh, yeah, that's because time's now. not flowing in the astral plane. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was pa it's paused by default, but I thought I had unpaused it, so I just paused and unpaused again. Is okay. is it working now? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay, so yeah, after you guys managed to drive off the psychometals that were attacking you, uh, or mentals that were attacking you, rather. Um, yeah, the currents like pick back up, and Ibri is able to, um, Ibri is able to, uh, like get you guys moving again. Um, the currents like kind of pick up there, and, and uh, he kind of directs you to focus your gravity towards the a certain way there, and uh, he's floating around on his magic, uh, like he's actually just standing on like this rock kind of like how the token you can see standing on like a little disc so he's flying around on that but um yeah he gets you guys on your way and uh a short while later you come into an area of where like the rocks are kind of thickening it up almost like a, like you're entering like an asteroid belt or something um and uh you do actually see, like, kind of resting right, kind of, like, either on top of or right or right up against uh, one of these rocks is this huge whale-like looking creature. Uh, you also, everyone can roll a perception check. Oh, I don't even have my character sheet open. Who? I know, we've just been talking. Yeah. No dice rolling. We gotta fix that. Gotta fix that. Yep. Oh. We found the space whales. No, oh, no. Not sin. Uh. Oh my god. Okay, well, you know. At least not everyone's blind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Tactic and Razok both noticed that there's a, actually a pair of other creatures that are hanging out very in a, in a like one of these rocks very close by. That is not one of these um, uh, one of the astral leviathans. It looks like it's something closer to your size. Um, they're kind of. It looks like uh, like it might be almost humanoid. Um, but nothing, not no humanoid that you've ever seen before. Hmm. How close are they to us? Like I know you said they're close to the Leviathan, but so oops, wrong Bhutan. Um. So you would be, it's probably about the same distance as the Leviathan, just on a different rock. So like a hundred feet Yeah, away. so, okay. He'll point them out to like our guide and he'll say, do you know what those, those creatures are over there? Uh, he does. He's, he kind of says, ugh, Calborn. They're very... 
strange creatures. Uh, Grant, I never, uh, I, I never know what they want, and they'll never tell you what they want unless they're going to take it from you. Ooh. So not friendly. And yeah, you guys. Uh, once they're pointed out, the rest of you guys can see them as well. They're not like super trying to hide. They're just hard, to, harder to see because they're, you know, much smaller. Uh, mm -hmm. They're probably only like maybe five and a half feet tall. Uh, I'll, I think maybe they'd be taller if they weren't kind of uh, as hunched over as they look like they are. Um, it looks like it has kind of a split mouthed uh, or split jawed mouth. Um, and it has like a hood like growth on its head. Um, mm. Yeah, they look kind of monstrous, but um, anybody who has knowledge planes could roll it to know more about them. I do. Knowledge plane. Four. Not a lot. Actually, I guess. Um, Billy knows a little bit about these. Um, Billy, you know that these, uh, the Callborn are, um, they're actually most commonly known, at least in the material plane, to be residing in Karamaga. But it's thought that they are probably from another plane, and perhaps in the astral planes, one of the main ones that people think they might be from. Um, they are um they are like a hive kind of based creature so they tend to uh and they they're like psychically connected to each other so you know that if a if there's more than one callborn together like they share each other's senses and therefore you cannot flank a callborn unless all of the callborn are flanked for example you can't catch you can't catch them a surprise uh like in a surprise round, for example, unless you sneak past every single one, because if one of them sees you, they all see you. Uh, okay. But yeah. yes, they are very, they're, they have like, they tend to like, uh, consuming thoughts and collecting like strange, um, like they tend to really like st collecting like artifacts and rare knowledge and books sometimes too. And, um, They've been known to sometimes, like, you know, make deals and trade for this stuff, but other times they'll just go and take what they want, and they can manipulate people's memories as well. So, if theoretically, if you had something stolen from you from a Callborn, you might not actually know that it was that it was them that did it. You might not even remember that you <clears throat> had the item they stole in the first place. Dang, that's a oh. uh, big brain. I'm going to pull you guys into another map here. But yeah, so they're kind of off here. It looks like they're like kind of observing. Um, you think that they definitely see you and maybe are aware that you can see them as well. Um, the see the Astral Leviathan over there as well, which is much, much larger. Um, in fact, I think they might even say how big they are in the on their entry here, let me check. Yep, this thing, so I think it's it's much longer than the token shows, I think, because the this is like this, I think this is yeah. This is like as big as a token can get on uh in Pathfinder rules, I believe. Okay. Um but yeah, there it's actually seven. Is that feet gargantuan? Long. This is colossal. Colossal, it's, okay. We don't yeah. have a grid, so I can't quite tall yeah. oh yeah i think there's there is a grid on here but it's very uh oh. hard to see because it's like the same color as the rocks yeah but um yeah so this thing's actually like 70 feet long so it's basically like the entire length of this rock that it's on pretty much um and yeah it looks like it's kind of just placidly sitting on the rock Yeah, they're 70 feet long and weigh 60 tons if they weren't in a weightless environment.
Um, the Shoki will speak up before you guys approach. He will say, "He should be. We should be able to talk with him. They're generally pretty friendly, and they value new experiences. So if there's something interesting that you could share with them, then he perhaps would be more amenable to helping us." I'm right. a bunny. That's new. Let's go and hope that those creatures over there don't cause any interference or anything. Oh, man. I'm scared. So they drift closer, I'm assuming you guys all go with. Mm. Hesitantly, but yes. <laughs> okay. Of course. And yeah, as you get closer, the astral leviathan has it has many, many eyes, but um, they seem to kind of. So you can't flank it. <laughs> focus on well, you can flank an astral leviathan because oh, okay. all of his all of its eyes are on the front of its, you know, seventy foot long body. Gotcha. Just has more than two eyes, um, and it looks towards you and says mm, visitors uh some more visitors yes more visitors i don't think i've seen most of you before <sighs> outsiders perhaps Perhaps. Uh, Shoki kind of does like a little half bow and says, I am a servant of Phrasma and I'm here trying to seek an errant soul. Yeah, interesting. Hmm, who, what can you tell me about this errant soul? Uh, well, he has been avoiding his fate that he's supposed to be seeking, and uh, this concerns us psychopomps greatly. As for my companions here, um, I believe they're searching for this for their own reasons, right? He He looks towards you. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm looking for a different one. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These. Um. Do you say that to him? No, because he he knows he from the other person. He kind of figured out the general area where his mom is. Oh, that's true. Yeah, Silka actually was able um, to help. Was able to kind of yeah. tell you. So he, he like, like, sat the group and's like, speak up. Who, yes. who is this errant soul that you're seeking? And why do you want to find them so badly? Uh, we know his name is Aradel. Aradel. That's his name, but who is he? Uh, I don't remember how much we know in character in this game versus last game. Oh, uh, you guys know pretty much everything you guys knew. Of okay, the last so game. Then we'll tell him. <laughs> yeah, he he was working with this evil, crazy dragon to try and destroy gods and lead a cult or something. And and his soul isn't. Uh, claimed yet or hasn't seen it, you know, followed its path. The Shul Saga says he's a star dead. Uh, a star dead. But a restless star dead. One that hasn't accepted his fate. Star dead? Huh. Yeah, 
Yeah, you guys. I think you guys heard that term last time too, right? Yeah, we did. Sounds right. Hmm, a cult, a leader of a cult, trying, seeking a way to end the gods. Hmm. 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 I must ruminate on this. His, uh. Many eyes slowly kind of blink, closed, back open again. He does like some very slow blinking. <laughs> he looks, he's thinking about things. It means he's comfortable around us long enough to close his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I see him. He, he's delirious with his, in his work. He can't let go. But yes, I see him. I don't think he can ever complete it, though. I don't think he has everything he needs. Very, very interesting. Do you know the Argent Gate? He asks you. Uh, no. May roll knowledge planes or knowledge religion. Oh, maybe. Um, no. <laughs> I don't think I have a rank in either, so I'll roll this one for funsies. With the bar bardic knowledge. Oh. I don't know shit. And Marcy didn't tell me about this. Didn't tell you about the the Argent Gate. No. I'm not even sure she knows about it. Maybe she does. Well, yeah, none of you guys know yeah. <laughs> where it is. But after nobody, everyone kind of looks, gives them a quizzical, like looks at each other, looks at him. Maybe somebody shrugs. He says, it is a place where you can reach almost anywhere in the multiverse, the realm of Elseta. But the place that this Aradel wishes to reach, cannot be reached by the Argent Gate. Or if it is reachable by there, Alceta will not let him go there, which is very unusual. So he sits within the shadow of the Argent Gate and tries to find his own way. He never will. I don't believe. But he has been there for quite a long time. I remember it before he was there. It was so long ago. But yes, that's where the, that's where you need to go. Within the shadow of the Argent Gate. I hope you were able to find him. Um, thanks. Yeah, the Shogi's like, I, I think this went really well, guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's get the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> Before he asks, like, oh, I need a sacrifice for that information. <laughs> uh, I'm going to move on. So wait, things up here. Do we do we know where it is? Uh, the shadow, the we don't know where the Argent, Argent Gate is. Yeah, the I Argent think, Gate. But we know that that's where he's at, apparently. So yeah. Well, can we ask him where's the Argent Gate? Sure, you can ask him anything you'd like. Uh, I'll I'll ask him. 
Uh, Where is or what is the arching gate? Oh, uh, it's that way. <laughs> he lifts a flipper up and points in the direction of the Argent Gate. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's over there somewhere. Points, he points down there. Okay. In a realm uh-huh. where gravity doesn't really like, it's just open space, basically. Yeah, like you look, you're like, I don't, I definitely don't <laughs> see any structure over there. But um, yeah, yeah, in that general direction. All I picture this thing is, this is did any, any all you guys play Ark? Like Survival have, Evolved? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the yeah. fucking space well. We're talking oh. to one of the space wells. That's all we're talking to right now. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is It is a space well. It's Sin yeah. from Final Fantasy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Alrighty. Uh, I guess we'll head in that direction. And do we have a compass to ensure I, that we're on trajectory? I, uh, How do comp- I pull out my compass? Uh, What's happening on it? Your compass spins around aimlessly. Damn. Um. Ibris says, well, I don't know exactly where this Argent Gate is, but I'm sure it sounds like a big deal, and I'm sure if we went back to Yulgamoth, somebody would be able to tell us exact and, and maybe give me, give us a chart that shows exactly where it is. Sounds like good a idea. good idea. Yeah. <laughs> maybe those guys know where it's at. Mm-hmm. Maybe Hopefully they're just coming over here to tell to tell us. And you notice that the you notice that the callborn are drifting over towards you. My guy puts his hand on his bow and gets ready. He actually, as they're moving, he like repositions himself. Okay. The back. They get within <laughs> like kind of thirty feet, and they stop. Yeah. And they communicate to you much like how uh much like how Billy does by speaking to you using telepathy. Dad, why is everybody getting in my head? And they they ask like who is this that you're asking the Leviathan about? None of your curious. business. If you wish to know. Cool. Yeah, I wonder how Shazra would <laughs> yeah. react. Shazra would like, be like, when you just nope. kill these he'd guys. He'd be all snarky and shit. And snarky, and he'd just start fighting them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Get out of our business. <laughs> He's like heavy gun go with fight, oh, it's like gaining experience, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I give XP. Uh, I'll give XP for these guys if you don't fight them too. No, I, I, I mean, like experience, like. Oh well, yeah, character. he actually it's means it in character, not the not yeah. the XP yeah. points. Yeah. He means I need the yeah. experience of Sword fighting these guys yeah. to yeah. hone yeah. my yeah. swordsmanship. My... Yeah, that's. <laughs> I don't realize right. that I'm playing. Like Shaz was like, I didn't realize we're playing Pathfinder. I thought I was a Skyrim <laughs> character, and that I only could get better at swordsmanship by using a sword. Mm-hmm. What a weird concept. Um, this. Uh, know about Ulp. Everyone can or roll a to. will save as you feel something like intruding upon your mind, perhaps. Listen, what happens in Vegas Ooh. stays in Vegas, okay? Just I think stop. I have a bonus thing. You can also roll a spellcraft check as well. Ooh, uh, let me Great. add that in there. One I think I have I an immediate action. It doesn't help me. 
Where's my dude? What do I do? As an immediate action, so plus two on will saving God, throw, clicking plus four against enchantment. I'm trying to click on Firefox. So I'm going to use my uh, mental placidity, Pluto. Okay. Immediate action, plus two. If it's enchantment, plus four. If I succeed, this allies get plus one. Okay, so allies would get plus one if I succeed, and I get one pool point back. Hmm. And this is my second use of the day, because I think... Uh, you used it in the last fight, I think. Yeah, too. and it doesn't it doesn't yeah. regenerate. So everyone so gets this would be said everybody gets a plus one. Uh, if if I succeed. If you succeed. And I get a plus two. So I get uh get a an... seventeen. That's including uh, that's the including plus, plus two. two. Okay. Well you do make the save, so So everyone else gets a plus one. Um E foot. I fail. E foot makes the save as well. But yeah, Razok fails, and Vander fails, and Tactic fails. However, fortunately, nothing bad happens to you. But they oh, say... They're reading our minds. Yes, they say, tell us this Aradel. We want to know more. Um, I feel um, like I'm going to do Because yeah, they read, they read your surface thoughts. Um, But it looks like now they want to read more than just your surface thoughts. I'm uh, going to so... start a performance. Okay, I was going to make everyone roll initiative anyways. So. I want to fascinate <laughs> yeah. them if I can. Okay. Oh, what my guy got personally mine red. He's a... Yeah, he's, uh, he's it's a will save to negate. Okay. And then did he sees... What's my current bard level? Are yes. we four? No, they uh, yeah. they are not. Five. Okay, they're not fascinated. All right, well, you know, I, I only have to make or... one save too because they have a hive mind, so they both get to make a save. Or... But mm. if one fakes it, they both make it. We're currently level six. I was what? gonna see if we can fascinate them. That's and what just, I have like, at least. Bail or something. Yeah. Or... yeah. Okay. Uh, and she. And she started. Well, she was trying to do a fascinate. <clears throat> she was trying to do a uh, fascinate okay. performance, so you, don't get, you guys don't get any buffs. She was trying to avoid oh, okay. having to roll initiative, but yeah, yeah. Um, because if that happened, if they got, if they both failed it, and you, she was fascinated, you guys probably could have just been like, "All right, we'll see you oh, later," and they'd be bye. like, "Okay," yeah. and they just <laughs> stared off and kind of drooled a little bit yeah. as you move away, like, uh, "What? Bye." Okay. Bye. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> nice, nice chatting with you telepathically. Hope you find your dad. <laughs> Is the Leviathan gonna just witness us fighting? He's just gonna be like, "Oh, good show, good show." Maybe. But let's let's roll as initiative just for fun. Oh no! <laughs> I rolled a one. I shouldn't have included him. Dang it! Yeah. Now he's in the um... combat tracker. Now he actually has <laughs> No air shots going his ways, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What if he had like critical fails and then like an arrow just Ooh, randomly oh, goes and hits him? <laughs> I played my buddy. So I, I, my one of my uh, Drew's younger brother would. Do like one one shot sessions, and he did critical oh, fails. Fuck! I just oh, hit the yeah. wrong button. Oh. I just reset initiative. It was so bad uh, because it was okay, like every all the PCs would critical fail, and then the freaking guy would crit like the crit roll every time. Like the oh, I, I was just like, oh my it. gosh. Yeah, so I'll, I can um, I can just re-enter everyone's initiative from the chat okay. log. It's just gonna take me a minute. Yeah, I accidentally hit the wrong button, so that was my bad. Um, this one is a 21. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Dang, I rolled a four. Um, yeah, let's see, get an 11. E-foot got a 15. Tactic got a eight. Uh, 
Nishoki got a 20. Oh, we actually got a 24, my bad. Um, mm -hmm. Billy got a 17. The other Callborn got a six. Oh yeah. The Astral Leviathan got a seven. Jeez. Rolled a nat one. <laughs> okay. Now wipe it again. I was trying to Yeah, I don't know. It just wasn't on the it wasn't on the first person in on the round tracker. It was like in the middle of the uh, the combat tracker for some reason. And mm. I was I was thinking like, oh, I just hit this button. Now I'll reset the round, right? Oh, no, no, it reset no. everyone's initiatives. <laughs> so I just didn't actually like comprehend what that button did. Um, so, really? yeah. Dude, that Leviathan has a super low initiative. We well, rolled a one. Yeah. He's actually got a plus six bonus, which isn't too bad for something that's freaking massive like he is. Slow like that, I guess. Actually, is it slow? Uh, well, this one seems kind of like slow, but uh, is it like a fly speed of ten? But <laughs> you think that they actually probably move very fast if they want to. Mm-hmm. Maybe not this one because this one's like really old. Like maybe this one's slow. Oh, he's a tired old man, huh? Mm-hmm. I resemble that remark. <laughs> <laughs> the Shoki kind of drifts backwards with his quarter staff out. It says, Stay back. I'm warning you. That's a good uh, accurate impression. <laughs> Dude, we did that Decker stuff King. throughout middle school and high school all the time, oh, so man. yeah. We did, uh, we Stay did water Decker, Decker King a lot. <laughs> um, this guy is going to move. Let's see. Does he have to attack hit somebody with his thing to do that? He's going to move forward. Um, he sees E foot doing some weird, weird stuff and like it. So he's gonna move up and he's gonna try to bite at E foot. Rude. It comes the bite. Oh man. Oh, he got a critical threat. Am I think I he confirmed. Dead? I doubt you're dead from just that. That's. I don't know. I am just a bar. <laughs> you're just a widow goblin. Hmm. You guys have you seen that uh that video before? Mm, gonna go with no. <laughs> I'll have to link it up in Discord later, if I remember. Alright, so I think he critical hits you with a twenty eight to confirm. So you take mm -hmm. uh So you're gonna take a total there uh I think that Yeah, it's a total of thirteen. So even though he crit you it it was only thirteen damage. Um, however, 13 would be a, yeah, that's it. You just take 13 damage. Nothing else happens. <laughs> okay. Not the worst. Yeah. He can't do his consume thoughts thing unless you are helpless, willing, or fascinated. <laughs> Just well, I don't have like, any oh, thoughts anyway, this. so it's okay. So he's trying to make you helpless right now by beating you up. <laughs> That'll right. do it! Uh, Vander, it's your turn. Okay. So you may move if you'd like by making a um, a wisdom check to try to basically change, like, will yourself in a direction. Um, that's a free action, but you can only try it once per round. Is it reduced movement? Um, what do you mean? At full speed. Oh, it's uh sixty feet per uh per round, basically. Oh, okay. 
So yeah, you'd be able to like move and do an attack um, if you make that wisdom check. Otherwise, you kind of just float there. Um, let me double check what the DC on it was. I believe it was like 10. I'm just going to say it's 10 because I don't feel like looking it up. <laughs> Right, but yeah, I'm gonna, mm. I do remember it's a plus six bonus to try it the second time if you fail it the first time. Um. Okay. I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna try and move. Okay. Go ahead and make a wisdom check. Okay. You make it exactly. You can go ahead and move. Okay. Um. Is that? 60 feet for one action? 60 feet for or one move rounds. action, yep. Okay, okay. Going to, I guess, come up behind this one. Okay, you can't really do curves with this, so... I, there, yeah, there's space. Will be a attack opportunity. Okay. Um, He's going to attempt to bite at you as well. That's a 27 hit. Yeah. Okay. You take ten damage, but okay. you may go ahead and attack him back. Um, light damage. Go. And is there flanking? I don't believe E Foot has a weapon out. Um, and also, mm, I think it's no. Flat footed at the moment. Okay. Matt will okay. be here soon. Just the normal attack then. I don't think I. Okay. Since I'm not blanking, I don't think any of my stuff applies ever. What did you I can take? do it through with the acrobatics roll, I think, too. But yeah, I, I wouldn't have been able to. But this is kind of like a non, uh, not normal uh, fighting situation because you're kind of floating in space right now. Yeah, I'm just double checking which power it took at all six. Okay, we're good. The normal attack. Mm -hmm. This one? Power attack. I believe if you, attack, if you just hit the attack action, there's a check mark for power attack, too. Yes. It does, yeah. That okay. looks right. Uh, let's see, does a 21 hit? Yes, 21 hits, so that damage... You'll hit him, and then I believe these guys do not have any DR, so all that damage goes through. You slash into him, and he has like this weird kind of like greenish blood that comes out. Um, he is still up though, but yeah, it looks like he wounded him pretty good. Okay. And that'll bring up Billy. Okay. Uh, what to do? I don't get my spells back because time doesn't move. Yeah, but if you guys go back to Yulgamot, you can rest there. Yeah. That's the other thing. Go Earth there. Tremor is going to do anything here. Mm, yeah. Not likely. Charm Person won't work, right? Because they're not humanoid. Correct, they are outsiders. <laughs> uh, let's see, what can I do? If you had Charm Monster, that would work, though. I Although, can mind thrust. Maybe not, because they have a hive mind. Yeah, I can I can mind thrust. That's what I can do. Okay. Uh, have any of them taken damage? The one that uh, Vander hit is taking damage. <laughs> okay, I will mind thrust... That one. Okay. Uh, hiya. Wait. Uh, hiya. That's the sound I make in his head when I thrust. Hiya. Okay. Uh, let's see. Here. Will 16. I'm getting Fox McLeod's flashbacks. <gasps> no, they have a high will save. No. They both make this. Wow. But I think it's because they, they have a high. They, they take half they damage, right? Three, yeah, yeah, they take half. So six. Yep. 
And can I like enough? They both recoil back from that. Yeah. Can I like uh, the do the thing where I move myself away from them? Yes, you can make a wisdom check. Okay. Uh, with what attributes? Wisdom. I don't think I do you it. You are not able to do it yet, but if you try to make it next turn, you get a plus six bonus. Okay, that's my turn. Okay. That brings us to E foot. Is five foot stepping, I think? Nope. So if I move, I'm they could take an well, attack of opportunity. Okay, kind of it is, but you still have to make the wisdom check. Okay. That's fine. I'm going to will myself away. Okay. Uh, where's the and also keep in mind you can cast quicken spells without increasing the cast the spell level or um or anything of your spells. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, because I have that. No, I mean, like, you don't need the feet. You can just do it. Oh, wait, I can cast... Yeah, can I cast... forgot about that, but... Yeah, oh well. you can cast a quicken spell every round if you want. Yeah, in, the, not... in this, in this because... dimension. Yeah, because like the astral plane is so aligned to magic here, uh, you can, like, any spell you cast, you can just for free use quicken spell on it. Um... So you're not able to make yourself move, but you still have, you know, you can cast spells if you want. So I can quicken a level one spell and then cast another spell? Yep. yep. Alright, I'm gonna... Highest level spell. They don't even have the limitations. If you have ninth level spells, you could quicken level There's nine no spells. There's no limitation, okay. Mm -hmm. uh... Astral Plane's nutty like that. That's crazy. Let me double check this spell and see if this is what I would like to try. Um, enchantment, compulsion, emotion, mind affecting. So basically, if you run into a level twenty wizard in the oh. astral realm, run away. All right, I'm or gonna quick <laughs> yeah. oppressive Pull boredom <laughs> on the guy closest to me. Oppressive boredom character, I guess. And do they have weapons? Uh, no, they're using claws and a bite. Like, they bit you with their weird okay. split jaw that he has. Where it, like, opens up, like, three ways. Like, he's got the two bottom jaws open up to the side, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have just too many will save abilities. Uh, looks like he makes it. Okay, then I'm gonna pierce or wait, no, I'm gonna start a performance. Okay. Uh I will inspire Shazra, who's not here. Shazra's just he's having a conversation with a sword, apparently. I don't know. They're in the argument, <laughs> yeah. maybe. As soon as Matt logs in, pretty much, I'm just gonna say he was delaying and let him go. <laughs> yeah. Round two. All right, We're so everybody's one, inspired. Throw him at the end of the initiative. But you're only inspired uh... if you want to be inspired. Okay. But I'm, I'm threatening I'm so them with inspired. insults, basically, so. <laughs> okay. It's bad. I mean, it works for Shaw's, right? He likes it. He likes it. Do you pull out a weapon or anything? Mm, mm, well, are we level six? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Sure, I'll pull out a dagger. Okay. That way, Vander can flank. Except he won't be able to flank because they have a hive mind. They're not flankable. I already forgot about my own thing. Oh, that was one of the first things I told you about these guys. Well, if you flank both of them, so if somebody well, else flanks that one too, then they actually do count as flank. You have uh, to be able. They have to you both have to be chain flanked. flank it. Kind That's of, yeah. yeah. Or can they be flanked once the other one's dead? Yes, that would do it too. If you kill one of them, yeah. the other one can be flanked. Or if you separate them somehow, because um, they have to be within like the three hundred feet one... of or something. I mean, yeah. It's a hell of a you, separation. I think it has to be creative. If you one. could like find a way to cut off their telepathic connection while they're closer as well. I don't know if there's a spell that does that, but uh the what is it called? Would uh, silence 
like an anti magic field. No, maybe, silence do doesn't it. stop telepathic, does yeah, it? Yeah, if I you feel like an anti magic field, killer do it. Yeah, that would be <laughs> how about how if you about just kill control, them? Yeah, uh, control spell where you're you're in charge of them, like they they're not considered an ally. Yeah, maybe. something like that would do too. If you like take control of their mind and basically yeah. pull them out of the hive network effectively. Yeah. All right, well, Razok, you're up. I'm going to full round the far one. Okay. Uh, with many shot and everything, and then I'm going to use my class ability, which is Vicious Aim, which lets me add uh, half of my highest favorite enemy uh, attack to any to all okay. my attacks. Uh, so it'll, yep. be a plus. it'll be a plus two to all these attacks. I don't have it plugged in. I think but... you used this last time, too. Sounds familiar, at least. Well, I used the the um, point the bullseye shot last time. This is like I hadn't plugged in the vicious aim yet. Okay, so is that included in this roll or no? No, it's not. It's plus okay. two to all the gotcha. attack rolls. Okay, well, one of your and damage. You're, you're attacking the one. The farthest here. one. Okay. Yeah. Um, he would be flat footed, but he's not because. Hive mind. So if one's one of them's not flat footed, then all of them are not flat footed. However, you do still hit with the uh, first attack. All right. So it'll uh, be thirteen damage total because it it's favored enemy, so it adds plus two to the damage as well. Thirteen for the first attack and for the second second arrow as well, right? We'll hit uh, for an additional um seventeen then. Seventeen. Okay. So thirty total damage. Yeah, pretty good. I forgot about what it was. His last combat I completely forgot about the vicious aim, which is like the main ability of this build. Is it gives up uh Spell casting. cast magic spell yeah. casting for this like ability. It's yeah. Basically, you always have favored enemy for yep. the most part. I had a uh, I played like a paladin archetype that gave up spell casting. It was kind of like that mm. too. Well, uh, actually, Zadarian's playing one as well that gives us spell casting. Yeah, you get you got to get something pretty good. Yeah. Spell casting. Um, the one that I did, what they got, what you got was uh, you got a bunch of bonus feats, and you also got the war priest thing, where your mm -hmm. your weapon dice scale on your yeah. deity's weapon. So I was running out the scimitar with that did two d six instead of just a d six. So yeah, it was yeah, it good. just made some basically a legit archer. Mm -hmm. Like they're they're always gonna have a bonus to their attacks. Yeah, sounds pretty which good. Which is nice. Yeah. Um. So let's see. I think it's an tactics turn now. Okay, tactic. Yeah. If only it was a construct. All right. So I'm gonna throw a bomb at the far one. Okay. All right. That's first touch AC. Yep. That will actually miss. So he'll just take. He just makes Ooh. a reflex versus splash damage, I believe, right? I don't think so. Hey, guess whose turn it is next? Uh, hello. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess I'm here now. You're right on time. It's your All turn. Right. Well, what, I'll have what, you roll. <laughs> Jab joke. You guys are in combat with some callborn. Some call board. Where where are we right now? Okay. So right. You guys, where continued, you guys continued on. We're, we're after talking the last with session. the thing. You guys space already yeah. already talked with the space whale, the astral leviathan. What did he, he say? Told you, so he told you that Aradel was was located in the shadow of the Argent Gate, which oh, he's being like, all cryptic. Uh, kind of because he was like, everyone's like, where the hell is the Argent Gate? And he's like, it's that way. And he pointed. But with it, in that direction. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't very <laughs> helpful. But the Argent Gate is a is a thing that probably other people know about, even if nobody here knows what it is. 
Um, and then as you guys were leaving, the Callborn were like, hey, what do you guys talk to the Astral Leviathan about? And as, as we pulled up to Astral Leviathan, these two yeah, these two Callborn were standing. like, Yeah, they were just sitting there rock. off on another rock and kind of watching as you guys went there. And like, hey, what did you guys yeah. talk to them about? We want to know about this. Shaz wanted to be proud. I said, no. Everyone's kind of like. Did you guys insult them? Uh, yeah. No. Actually, I started not, to. Yeah, not a little initially. bit. I tried but, to fascinate them with insults. He, I did have the discussion. What would Shaws were do here? Like probably insult them and start start okay, a fight. Okay, yeah, good. I'm proud of you guys. <laughs> what's the uh, what's the <laughs> number? That I'm putting in for this. There are two of them here. Um, go so, ahead and roll initiative. Oh, I see. Go ahead and roll initiative, and assuming you beat um, the Callborn six, you get to go next. Uh, so tactic, yeah, your thing no, misses. A- DC 17, and if he fails, he takes seven damage. If and succeeds, what really, yeah. what really started? Yeah, he the fails, combat, he takes seven damage. Do you, Matt, what really started the combat is they forcibly mind read our like yes, they surface thoughts. they used detect thoughts on you guys and tried to uh, like figure it out that way. And they read the surface like, oh, who's tell us more about Aradel? Uh, I don't, I don't mind that. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> proud that you guys told them to mind their own business and fuck off <laughs> yeah <laughs> that is definitely what i would have done in character i was like and what i was like he would probably first insult them and then be like i, I need practice for my sword play let's let's fight them <laughs> yeah we joke okay. that let me roll initiative we joke that shazra thinks that he's a skyrim character and he can only get better at swordsmanship by fighting with a sword yeah exactly all right, okay. I rolled my initiative. Perfect. I'm just going to adjust you to, since Tactic already went, I'm going to adjust you to being right after Tactic. And it will be your turn. So you are currently floating in the um, astral plane. There is a Callborn right next to you, though, so you don't oh, necessarily need is? to move. Yeah, I went up and attacked the foot. Um, it doesn't look like it's right next to me. And the astral Leviathan. Um, I just rolled an initiative. Weird. So I, don't see, <laughs> I see a a thing. I yeah. see myself as here, and I see one right here. I I also see what Matt sees. So and there's another one over I here. Move you or like that? Are you? Where I'm just gonna you? hit the F5 button. So if I could be right here, right. I'll I'll do that. <laughs> well, I had you right here, but oh, okay. Oh, I'll move up. Wait, where are you? Right, where right. are you going? I'm. That's, that's I'm, I'm going right here. That's, that's you. Yeah, that's. Yeah. That's right. Okay, I see that as me. What? Maybe I should reload. No, no, no! You moved your. I hit the F five button and it's you're not moving. moving yet. You moved me. your token <laughs> towards. Razzle. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I see. Okay, that's good to know before I attack. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This thing is our guide, right? Okay, I see yeah. it, Callborn. Yeah, I'm gonna stay right here, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to attack. Okay. Uh, let's see. Am I gonna cast a spell? Yes, I'm gonna cast a spell at least. Um, just an arc. I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, one point for my arcane pool, and we're just gonna plus enhancement bonus, uh, plus two. Okay. The um, uh, I reloaded the game and it still doesn't show how you guys are talking. Like, hello, none of the enemies are next to us. Oh, but you can hear me, right? I can, I can hear you. I'm saying the map isn't like the map isn't up to date or something. Like they're they're adjacent to us right now. Okay. Or oh, I see that. Because for me, I reloaded and they're not still. So maybe Pluto's. Oh, uh, my screen somehow. also. You're on top of the Shul Saga as well. Did I not roll the Shul Saga's initiative? Uh, did... now I'm not. I did not roll the Shul Saga. Okay, initiative. so yeah, swift action, enhance my weapon, and I'm going to spell combat, arcane strike. Here's the first attack at. Two down. Yeah, because it's spell combat. 
Okay. Oh, it says you targeted. <laughs> I targeted? Apparently, it says you targeted tactic. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. Rude. Um, I don't know how to target him. How to not. I think I think maybe you I'm not sure, maybe control clicking or something, but Okay, I think I've Now I know what that does. Now. It lets me it actually shows me. I don't think you guys see this, but it shows me like an icon that says what is we, we what see his it. AC is and Oh no, we don't see that. You just see the targets and you see We see the token. target rat. But I see like next to him a thing where I can roll his saves yeah, on yeah. one side That's and the crazy. other side is AC his touch AC and his flat footed AC. Ah. Uh. Huh. Anyway, uh, versus this thing, though, a 22 does hit, though. Okay. Um, then I'm going to cast my arc mark. Okay. DC 15 check. concentration check. I have to not roll a 1. You did not roll a 1. Perfect. Yep. Calculated. All right. Uh, here, extra attack. Oh, uh-oh. Well, can I crit these things? I don't know if I can. You sure can. Yes. So he just takes he takes the crit damage. Yeah, you just can't flank him. Unless you flank both of them at the same time. Or have one. Or dead. kill one of them or something. Yep. Okay, uh, he is still up, but he looks like he is barely... Barely still standing. Uh, Astral Leviathan doesn't do anything. Uh, this other Colborn is going to. Yep. Let's see. He got shot a bunch by Razok, so he's going to actually charge Razok. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That'll be 26, actually, because he's charging against Razok. Does that hit? Uh, What was it? To hit? 26? Yeah, that hits. Okay, so you take 12 damage. Right. Yeah, go from a virtual tank to... <laughs> right. Shulsaga actually is going to chip in and attack with his trident. He misses. Good job. He tried. <laughs> All right. Uh, Shogi just gonna kind of hang back. He's too old for this shit. Uh, Callborn's gonna turn his attention to Shazra since Shazra just crit him. He doesn't like that. He's gonna full attack Shazra. So he bites at you and then tries to claw at you twice. Okay. Um. The 22 and the 24, yeah, those hit. Okay, so his bite misses, but he does hit you for 13 damage. Okay. Let me see. I, have to, I add. All right. Thank you. Hopefully I don't put up my shield spell. All right, Vander, you're up, and you do have a flank this time, because Ifrit pulled out a dagger. All right. Also, Shazra, I was performing. I don't know if you included that. No, I I don't have the buff toggle. Go ahead. What am I at? 3D. 3d4. I should be able to... Okay. Don't forget you have Inspire Courage as well. Yes, Inspire Courage. I click my attack. Damage bonus. 
three D six power attack. Single attack. Hello, game. Is it hanging on you? I need to reload. Uh, hmm. I'm not sure. Maybe. I'll try it again. I see your buffs applying. So it's oh, good. I think it's because I did a formula problem. Wrong formula. Pretty sick. There we go. Yeah, it's because of formula error. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so that will hit. Is it 3d6 for the uh, yeah. hidden strike damage? Or is it D, like, I think it was like D8 oh, D4. to D4s, depending on situations. Oh, D4s. I, re I read it on D4s. So here, I'll just roll 3D4. So. Okay, you rolled better on those than the D6s anyway, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually did by one. Yeah. That's it's funny. D6s if they're <laughs> flat-footed, but not flanked, I believe. Or D8s, it's something like it's, that. It's, uh... Yeah, hidden strike is weird. Like he gets D8s. It's D8s where when it's, no, it's D8s if they don't know that you're an enemy and you attack. Yeah, them he also has like some abilities that he can do that'll trigger the D8 damage. Like his oh, okay. three dashes, where he uses acrobatics to move through an enemy square. Um, if he does that successfully, yeah. he gets a D8. And if if he's still alive next turn, his next turn, which I don't think he's going to be, I'll get a free attack on him or a provoke on him. Yeah, um, I think though, I yeah, you actually do enough to drop him. Okay. You still have a move action. All right, let's try it. Try to move to the other guy. Yeah. Roll ability. wisdom check. You got it. You may move in a straight line up to sixty feet. Um, okay. I'm just gonna go there. Okay. Uh, Billy, you're up. Europe or Asia? <laughs> uh, so if I will save, I don't know if I should or can do much. <sighs> oh, I didn't reopen my character sheet after restarting. Uh, do I have any team buffs? No. Yes, I can heal. Is anyone hurt? Yes. I will heal E-Foot. Yay! Okay. With Cure Light Wounds! Woohoo! Boom. Oh, Max Roll! Ooh. Wait, why is that? Plus that should be plus... plus I think since you're tiny, you actually have to move into E foot square as well to deliver it. Uh. Oh, he's tiny. Four. Oh shoot. Yeah, I guess technically E foot could reach over to you. Though, that should have so. been plus five. I think we were talking. About... We're level six. We are level six. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, so... it's because, you have, because oh, you have negative levels. Because you have negative levels. That's yep. it. Negative oh, level. Oh, you have a negative level. Uh, I have two energy drain. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah, you're fighting your spike levels. Uh, so I have to do the wisdom check to move. Though, what were we fighting the gate with negative levels? The psychomentals. Oh, that's right. But they're only temporary ones. Like they're not even the ones that. Uh, you don't even like, need to make a. Safe yeah, they don't. They're that. not even the ones that can become permanent. Okay, like, I they can have move. A, they have a duration less than twenty four hours. That is just good. Okay. So I move into E foot square. Okay. Which I. I don't want to actually. I uh, whatever. I'm on your square, and I heal you. <laughs> okay. I think in uh, Foundry, it's pretty friendly about letting people move. Yeah, I can. I'm not underneath people's tokens. Forever. Yeah. Look, Unity has been way better than the original, so. It does still have that issue though, where if you try to move into someone else's square, like. Yeah, but Good I can luck. pick up your token a whole lot easier. But I still have to battle walls, though. So yeah, walls know. Walls have been a problem. They, yeah. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. I need to turn that shit off for next session. <laughs> Go back to <laughs> the lighting. 
Yeah, yeah dude, I can't, gliding. I can't pick your tokens up and move them past the walls. It's the weirdest thing ever. It fights the GM, even like, no, you gotta play by the rules, GM. Yeah. No one can go through that wall. Nobody goes through the wall. <laughs> Just crazy. <laughs> okay. Um. So Efoot gets healed a little bit. Efoot, it's your turn. A lot of bit. We're level six. That was a twelve point okay. heal. I am going to actually yeah, have pretty good heal for. Yeah, that was a good heal. For what level you are. Oh, uh, so one of them's it. dead. He did. Yep. Okay. I don't have to move then. I am going to quicken for level four spell. Character. Use His piercing body's, like, shriek floating towards you while bleeding. On the other one. Okay. Uh, piercing shriek. Is that a fortitude save? Yeah. Do these guys have SR? I don't think so. I didn't make it do well before, but just realized I haven't. I don't think they do, though. Okay, nope, they do not. All right. Uh, well, it's forward, saves not great. Hey, it failed. Okay, so he's staggered. Okay. Um, and then. And he's just staggered, no damage. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh,. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't even need to like quicken that, but I did. <laughs> I'll heckle him for the heck of it. I don't know. Why not? I don't know if it's going to do anything, but hey. Heckle. Oh, wait, no. Uh... This is a. This is a. No, this is a chitty chatty thing. No, I don't have anything. I guess I'll try to make him bored again. I, he's, he's staggered and bored, I guess. Oh, you're not using Heckle? No, it's not what I thought it was. Mm, okay. We'll, we'll try the oppressive board. He'll just need to make a will save. Same DC. A will save, okay. Yeah. Uh, I think he made it. Okay. Then... But he is still staggered. Okay. okay. Um, Razok, it's your turn. You will. Remember, you can Time do like a... you can do like a five foot step, but you have to make still have to make the wisdom check to do it. Yeah. Unless you have natural flight of some sort. No. No, he doesn't. He'll he'll try to move. So let me uh, roll okay. that. Wisdom, right? Attribute. Hey, that's the DC exactly. <laughs> nice. Um, he will move to there. Yep. And he's just gonna do one attack. Let me. Do the bullseye shot so he gets plus four and the vicious aim. Oh, deadly aim. Attack, so it'll be plus six to attack and plus two to damage. Yeah, get those plugged in somehow, essentially. Okay, that will hit. Alright, and so. Is 19 damage. All right. Um, he is still up. Really? Oh, was that your for turn then? Yeah, that's it. Okay, that's tactic, it you're me. up. Well, then tactic's gonna throw another ba bomb. Okay. Um, that'll hit his touch, I see. Woo! A bob on. Let's see how we do here. A bob -bow? I hate bob <laughs> uh, It's been a hot minute since I've seen a bob -bow. Oh, we'll go pay like Wrath of Righteous because that's all you fight is Babaos. Swimming in Babaos, yeah. And Lots they're stronger. 
they're stronger oh, no. in Wrath of the Righteous than they are in. <laughs> they're yeah. kind of an overstatted, like I think they're like CR six or something, but they kind of punch above that. In uh, Wrath of the Righteous, they get given flank as long as two of them are attacking the same target. They oh, that's gross. Sides, yeah. So they just sneak attack you all the time, unless you play. That's also why I make my front liner um, like. It's nice to make them a barbarian or something. Yeah, I was, I was just about to say, <laughs> man, they just want you to always play a barbarian, don't they? Of course, my actual character that I've got in my current game, which I haven't played in quite a while, is a bard, an archer bard. I just sit back and do buffs, and I'm like, yep. Uh, okay, so this guy is barely still up after Tactic hits him with a bomb. Uh, is there anything else you want to do? Nope, that'll do it. Okay. Shazra, you're up. So if you would like to move somewhere, just tell me where you'd like to move and then make a wisdom check. Mm. And, yeah, if you fail the check... What if, if I you... use my magic to move? That works fine. You don't have to make the wisdom check then. I'm going to cast Bladed Dash okay. and oh. show up over. Also keep in mind, you may cast a spell as a Quicken spell once around um, oh, without right. increasing spells because you're on the Astral Plane. Let's see if that changes. Can I, so you can might I, decide can I to do this guy? a second spell if you want. <clears throat> hmm. You might not need to, though. So Maybe the first spell will be enough. This guy is pretty low right now. Um, let's see. But it still takes a spell slot, right? Yeah, it still takes the same spell slot it would normally take. Okay. Um. Yeah, let's just cast Bladed Dash as part of my spell con. Okay. So Here. Bladed Dash is you just get a free attack, right? I get to move up to thirty feet, and I can take an attack at any point during. The Yep. So I'm going to take the attack one flank, and okay. I don't provoke attacks of opportunity against a target, which is going to. Yep. It's the only target that's still up. Let's see attack. Do I have to target him? Nope. You can just roll it. I'll know who you're targeting. I think I did figure out how to target by accident. Yeah, yeah, and I, I can see too. who you're targeting because it put a little red dot above them. Ah, almost... uh, is that including the flank bonus though? Uh, that is not including. Okay, that hits. Okay, and that is enough. Down? Yep, that is enough to bring him down. All right, sweet. Bye. All right, we are out of combat. I wonder what they wanted to do with that information. Too late now. <laughs> the yeah. Well, they probably wanted to sell it. Ibri says, sell. "I don't. Who knows what they want to do with that information? I told you they. They just hoard it. Hmm. Yeah, they, they would have sold it to the highest bidder, which awful. I mean is They're is fine, people. but not for me." Selling information in Cheliax is very serious business. They effectively were trying to do this Rava, so he acted... But we're not in Cheliax. As I was saying, we acted <laughs> it correctly. Well, <laughs> I've never been to Cheliax, but around these parts, what they are trying to do is also mm -hmm. considered theft. Good. I'm glad that you're sensible in astral laws. There's <laughs> one thing about the astral plane. It is very rational. That's good. Way more rational than your strange material plane. Watch it there, all. Uh, you know, I'll have to tell you some more about Asmodeus. All right. What? I'm kidding. We'll head back to Yolgamot. 
we'll figure out I'll figure out what this Argent Gate is. And assuming you guys are willing to pay me a little bit more for another trip, I'll take you there as well. Okay. Pay you just a little bit more, just a little. We sure. did negotiate with him to take us there and back, but yeah, this whole this new place would be part of the I'll give you my repeat customer discount. Oh nice. All right, well, we'll whatever he wants, we'll pay it <laughs> okay. within reason. I want ten thousand gold pieces and your shoes. I want your memories. <laughs> <laughs> he opens up his third jaw. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! I was third a callboy all along. Oh no! They have three jaws. They have, yeah. yeah, like they have like the thing where the their two bottom jaws open out to the side. If you look at the artwork, weird. Uh, you Strange. weren't here earlier for the for the knowledge planes check. Actually, you might you might know about the. It's so they as well. can like swallow bigger things, but you can unhinge their jaws. Yeah, yeah. like a Billy sleep-tip. made the check earlier, and he he knew that Callborn are most commonly seen on the material plane in Karamaga. Like they're those weird things that live underneath Karamaga. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we actually ran into some of a couple of these guys in Shattered Star too. Yeah. Yep. I uh, I can't remember. I made skeleton if, out of one out of one of them. And then city be yeah. summoned by wizards. I'm, and I can't remember if they showed up in the last game while you guys were in Karamaga or not. Uh, probably, but no, oh, insignificant, I guess. All right. Well, uh, yeah. How much does he want us to pay him to take us to the? Uh, he'll he'll do it for like twenty gold. All okay. right. But yeah. it's gonna take you a little while to get back to Yulgamot, so. Don't need to worry about it until I get oh, to so back there. Oh, so plans might change. Noted. We'll, we'll see. But Somebody I'll, might I'll, die I'll along the way. I'll 20 gold on the table. As paid. Oh, okay. Going to prepay him. Yeah. It's so Thank that you, you don't, you know, flee on us. No, he's going to flee with your money now. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's, he's already <laughs> I whispered to e foot. It's okay. I don't have any intention of letting him go. <laughs> oh, that's I. I believe he's useful. you. He's be useful to us. If he runs off, I happen Shaw's to know and ask for Leviathan that can find him. <laughs> that only points in directions. I mean, I if mean... you're particularly useful to us, it's it's not in our best interest. Best interest to let you know. <laughs> He'll be like, he's he's Dark where word. the three beams meet. Oh no! <laughs> in that direction, he points like. <laughs> Actually, no, this reminds me of, like, something I, I had a lot of fun with realizing when I was playing Hester. What's that? Uh, after, after um, Secret's character had resurrected her, she was like, thank you for bringing me back to life. Now I'm going to make sure that you never leave me. <laughs> it's true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hester and Charlotte had an interesting <laughs> dynamic. They did. They were... They were not the best of gal pals. They, they were, were until you like started kind. hitting on <laughs> that dude. Mm-hmm. The the guy who eventually left and then showed back up in the in the the thing, but we didn't know it was him until we had destroyed it. <laughs> what in the tournament? Yeah. Wait, who? Which guy are we talking about? I don't she ha- she had an obsessive crush on 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 the guy. I don't remember what, what his name was, but he was like a. I don't know. He, he was like a. But she yeah, threw a fireball guy. at Charlotte or something. I don't remember. It was. What did you flame? You like burning hands to me? I don't remember. Probably. I don't yeah. know. Something like that. <laughs> Do you guys remember how to put the health bar on your character? Like, uh, if you token? click on your token. I mean, oh. I think Pluto has to do that. Um, if you click on your token, do you see a little gear button to the left? You have to of it? right-click it. If you right-click your token, yeah, there should be a little gear next to oh, your okay. token there. If yeah, you click yeah. on there, I think there is an option for. Yeah, it shows 
Yeah, host. there's a resource yeah, tab, and then I think you can adjust it there to be like always yep. show, show when hover, or whichever option. Got it. I was doing it through the character. I was doing that exact thing, clicking on the character sheet, but not on the actual token. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah, I guess if it doesn't update it on other maps, you might have to do that on the character sheet uh, yeah. by hitting the button that says token up on the top right of the character sheet. Yeah. And then That's it'll what I was doing. Oh, okay. It should apply to future ones. I think you have to do it. Like, okay. You know, if you do it on there, whenever I drag the token from the mm. um, from my actors tab onto a map, then it will do with those settings. All right. Sweet. There we go. All right. Um, while you guys are heading back to Yulgamot, if somebody would like to roll a D100 for me. Ooh, 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 ooh. Can I? Pick me. Tasting that high of rolling 100 again. It's been so long since I've rolled 100. It's not a 100. 46. Because I do have a couple, like a list of, or a table of hazards that could potentially happen, but I think you're going to be okay. You also have a guide, which helps uh, reduce the risk of hazards as well. Astral plane. Yeah, the only thing you come across on the way back to, um, you actually do encounter like some a group like as you're one back of like Martial Saga. Um, it's a group of like three of them, but they're not hostile or anything. Um, they just kind of like move past you, go in a different direction. But other than that, uh, the trip back to Yulgamot is uneventful. All right. And you eventually get back to Yulgamot. I'm going to activate the map Good. for it. Oh, and this still has the old. I'm going to delete that one and just drag them on here. And it takes like what, like, like a day or so to get back? Um, It's hard to tell for sure because you're in the timeless astral plane, but yeah. Do we recover probably... our spells? No. Uh -oh. But. Now that you're back in Yulgamot, time starts flowing again. Oh, and okay. if you stay in Yulgamot for a day, then you will heal and recover spells as normal. We might as well take a day to recover. I would like my spell slot back. And, uh, yeah, as you guys kind of get there and arrive, like at the kind of the drift docks, um, uh, Ibri will he'll tell you like, well, I'll go ask around about this Argent Gate myself, but uh, if I don't find anything, I'll meet back here with you tomorrow. Uh, about twenty hours or so, and uh, if I haven't figured out, maybe one of you guys will, and uh, we'll go from there. Sounds, I'll sounds good. I'll ask around as well. All right. Good luck, everyone. Yeah, I'll follow Efoot, whoever else is asking. I'll offer some diplomacy. Okay. And if that doesn't work, station. <laughs> Shaw's just thinking he's doing good, but it's really Efoot they like. Okay. I don't know. I think it's I think it's obvious that E has a way of <laughs> no, endearing people it. to her. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't do well, but you did. <laughs> I don't know why they find you so endearing, but because I'm next to you. Works. Maybe, maybe <laughs> like by, by like proxy, you're just much more like you're. You're not as unsettling to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But if they give us any trouble, I'm gonna yeah. Uh, what about everyone else? What a uh, Vander Razok tactic. What are you guys doing? What is Billy doing? Mm -hmm. Um, he 
he'll ask around, but he's not like really good. He's not a people person. Okay. So, um, I guess I'll roll diplomacy, even though I got or zero. So I did put one point. We should totally find the nicest house here and break through the doors. I got bombs that'll go through them. What? You want to go rob places? No, I'm just being smartass. Um, I can't think of anything I would want to do here. You try to find a place to stay. Happy's just as happy sleeping out like in a park or something. <laughs> I think you go sleep in the fort in that in the strange forest you guys walked through earlier. Um, I mean. Do you guys want to sell this sending gem? Oh, um, did well, we get that from here? I'll remind you the sending gem is a gem. Okay, so depends on which one you're talking about. Um, yeah, it's one way communication to what this to patriarch. The patriarch. Yeah, so I mean, I guess you could sell it, but it might be hard finding a buyer that'd be interested in buying something. So well, we could lie to the buyer. Oh, well, maybe, yeah. I feel like we could get a lot for it, but I'm I'm also wondering how we could use it to our advantage. Cuz I feel like we could maybe What exactly did it do again? It just lets you it lets it you sends send a message, message to, Pedriarch. to Pedriarch. Right. Just send a message to him. I know what you did last summer. That's it. That's all we need to do. Send a message. Hey, you up? <laughs> Hi, are you up? But it only sends like And then never respond. Day. You just ghost them the rest of the time. What are you wearing, Pedriarch? <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Can we keep sending send messages? Or is it just one just, message? Just, just send a message. <laughs> one I message is 25 you. words. Uh, the other thing you know that it does, I think you guys have a similar one as well. You have a couple of, you have a few of them that can let you communicate with, um, uh, what's his name? I only you? have this. Gonkul. You have ones that let you talk to Gonkul as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it works very similar. Uh, the one with Gonkul actually lets, uh, I think this one does the same thing. It, it, it oh. gives them enough of a ability. So here's it's the dangerous part about they it. Teleport they can use you. it to teleport to you as well. It gives yeah. them like enough of a vision of where you're at that they could teleport to you if they immediately cast the spell. Um, we need to keep the Pedriarch one yeah. so so we can be like, meet us at the playground, you know, later on, you know. Yeah, like when you're ready to fight him. Yeah, yeah. That would be cool, yeah. <laughs> but I also think we could use it as a means of like tracking too. Uh, maybe through magic or divination somehow. Yeah. Um, it's kind I of an item tied to him. Mm -hmm. Have um a few things I would want to sell. Okay, this is a place you can sell. They have um, let's see, the marketplace here has a purchase limit of one hundred and seventy thousand gold pieces and available okay, spell casting of ninth. So yeah, pretty much anything you have, you can sell here. Okay. Um, um what am I selling? Like, what's the? Who did we lose, by the way? Fifty oh, percent. We lost Eric. Okay. Oh no! I heard someone disconnect. Yeah, fifty mm. percent. Uh. Okay. So. I have two scrolls of teleport, but I feel like these are eight or five better to hold on to. Um, uh, if we're selling stuff, I'm gonna sell this sapphire for five hundred gold pieces. Four five. Yeah, go for it. How do you want these? Party Pluto? Five? Do you want to? Uh, okay, so let's see here. If the item is something on your sheet that has a value, I believe you can use the gift option and send it to the loot sheet. And I think there's an option on the loot sheet that I can sell it to and like to convert it into gold and then split back to you guys. Okay. Alternatively, you can just do the math yourself. I trust you. You can just remove from your sheet and figure out how much gold it is and then divide right. it out. Uh, yeah, I sent the sam sapphire over there. That's the only thing I have. Also, I can't figure out how in the world to input currency. Oh, it's how to input currency? On these sheets, yeah. Because every time I type in the field, it just empties. Mm. And it's all grayed out, too. 
Mm -mm -mm. Not sure. Why That's does weird. everything work for you? It never. I don't. I just, um, it, I it just worked for me. Yeah, no, this thing doesn't let me input stuff for some reason. Yeah, I remember you having issues with that trying to update your character sheet too. So I don't yeah. know what is causing that. It might be something. It could be something on my settings or something. Like, um, figure ownership. I'll try opening this up in Edge if I can remember mm. next time. Oh, it is. I, I probably said set, that last time. Well, I do have you set as the owner for eFoot, but it could be a problem with the permissions not functioning how they're supposed to. Mm. Who put the ring of counter spells there? Is that getting sold? No, that was on. That was on uh, Malice. Remember. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, and you get it to the group, the party. Did anybody want that, or is it just getting sold then? Probably just get sold. Um, yeah, 1404 from me to everyone. Okay. All right. Everybody else can add 1404. Okay, so we're manually adding. We're not doing the thing. For the ones that are in here, I'll convert these, and then I'll... I'll divide that out. Okay, but the fourteen oh four is man is. Yep. Okay. Oh, I have to do math. Maybe I'll just make a container item and label it how much gold I have. It might let me do that. She will do. There we go. I have a container of thirty gold pieces. Woohoo! Figure out how this sheet works. I think there's a button I can click that will convert everything to gold. I feel like I've seen it before, but yeah, now, 14, now I'm not seeing it on here. <laughs> 1,400 pieces. That's how much we get. You'll get some more once I figure out how to do this. Otherwise, I might just have to. Give you, I might have to do the just do the math too, and just give you another number to add to that. But give me a second. I wonder, I'm going to look up and see if I can find up find really quickly like how to use the foundry sheet to convert it to money. I knew how to do it on the old loot sheet, but this is like the official one, which the, the old one doesn't work anymore. <laughs> but... Wait, what happened to Tactic? I don't know. Oh. He, he dipped out. Uh, well, he didn't say anything, so I'm not sure. Uh... Actually, he did say something in the chat. Just, uh, oh. all right, loves, I gotta fly. Good luck. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I just didn't see it. Wait, is that the button? No, that's not the button. Okay, I'm just gonna have to do the math. I'll figure. I'll try to figure this out later. So we got. Let's see. The sapphire sells for full price because it's a trade good. Um, ring counter spell sells for half price. We are dividing this six ways. So everybody gets an additional 417 gold. And then I'm just going to... 407. Wow, this is like a skull. Okay, more manual or... Yep, just everyone Four manually add 417 gold. Okay, I'm, I'm writing it down so we have the record for, you know, Derek or whoever. So I guess that makes it in total four hundred or one thousand eight hundred something after the other gold that split up. Four one seven. 
I, I'm just doing it right. one at a time. So. 1,850. Oh, that is, that is quite a sum. That's this a good amount like, for this level. We have some money. Look at yeah, this is this is almost enough to go and pay for another semester at Academy. Yep, Shazra leaves the party to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. We'll do a whole session of him trying to go through the bureaucracy of getting back into school. Deny. Good times will be had by all. <laughs> or at least for me and Matt. <laughs> Make him take an assessment test. <laughs> God, who all who else was there for Isaiah goes to school? Uh, I mean, me. I know yeah. Zidorian was there, yeah. I feel like we were missing a few people for that session, too, but maybe not. Maybe everybody was there. And no, just we were all there. Around. Everyone was there and sat around while I spent, yeah. like, two hours trying to get back in school. Basically. <laughs> uh, Wait, Matt wasn't there. Cause Hesh no, I wasn't. No, that was, was before Matt group. joined the campaign, yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't have a... Uh... I don't know if we were recording that. Hester would have been a very yeah. mischievous shit in school. Yeah, apparently we all were, and that's why they blamed us for burning down the library. She but would, was... she would try all the ways of like getting around. We have like, it. Having to put an effort. It should be recorded. Oh, okay. I should go yeah. look. I should go look up Isaiah goes to school. <laughs> really, of the excitement. That's like if we don't have enough players for session. You have like a substitute teacher just put on a movie. Uh... That's gonna be the movie we watch. <laughs> well. Because I did like a different session. I remember, I can't remember who it was with. I think it was in my other game, and it was like only Mantis and Zadorium were there or something like that. And I think I did like a thing yes. where basically just Mantis did a bunch of stuff, and Zadorium kind of was just hanging out. <laughs> I that, literally was just hanging out. Yeah, but there was nobody one. else there, and it was like after Mantis had missed a ton of sessions. So it was kind of like a this is what you were doing while your character wasn't in the story for the last like three months or whatever. So it like kind of worked out. Yeah, it was fine. I think I was just but, hanging yeah. out and playing another game or something. <laughs> yeah, it was so alternate that was a Earth infinite loop, right? Yeah. No, this was the one before that. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, this was before that. This was the one that caused the. Yeah, that caused the infinite loop. loop. So I, so I was saying, I don't remember if we were recording that one. I don't think so. Mantis's adventure. Yeah, we did. Oh yeah, we did record some of it. Okay, there we go. Yeah. It was. Uh, that was what it was record called. session it was called. one. We started at one. Uh huh. Wow. We yeah. So you can probably listen to it. If okay, Hester no, actually, was in school, she'd charm her way into a study I group. should actually have known that because I've gone back and I have rewatched the final episode uh, a couple times. So, oh, yeah? I, yeah, or at least once. I did it at least once. It was quite an ending. Yeah, it was a very memorable ending to a campaign. I'll put it in the Discord VOD. All right, uh, so uh, back actually, on topic here for the... Um, so yeah, I guess that's something uh, some of you guys go and do is, is sell loot. Mm -hmm. um, Efoot, while you are uh, asking about this, you find a couple mm -hmm. people that tell you like that are like, oh yeah, I, I know, but I know about the Argent, the Argent Gate. That's like Alceta's okay. realm. Um, but nobody's able to like tell you specifically. But one person does say, well, I know where you can get a star chart that would that can direct you there. Okay. He says there's a there's a Mercane that runs a shop near the docks that sells all sorts of uh, uh, star charts, and he probably would have something that would that would give you what you need. A Mercane. Okay, okay. I know what that is. You know what a Mercane is? Mm hmm They okay. have it in Rain and Winter. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, there are actually uh, quite a few Mercane. They're they're like the second most common like being in here after Shulsaga. Um, mm -hmm. Although there's so many different types of things in here that doesn't necessarily mean they're like super super common still. But um, but yeah, there's quite a few of them that are running like uh, shops. Mercane tend to be like very uh, like 
mercantile focused. Uh, yeah, this Mercane had a um, den- denizen of Lang, like, follow him around everywhere. Hmm. As, like, his little servant? Yeah. All right, so yeah, you uh, get pointed into this, uh, like this little tent, basically, kind of set up. Like it looks like it's, but it's not quite a tent. It's like a, it's a, it's not like a permanent, like structured building, but it's something that's like more permanent than a than a tent. Like it's like almost like an awning, but it, yeah, like it's it looks like it's been there a while and is very much mm. more sturdy. Um. He has a little stall. And yeah, you see a tall, blue-skinned humanoid wearing loose flowing robes that has an alien face that has, with too many eyes and fingers that have too few, or hands that have too few fingers. He's only got like three fingers. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's four fingers. I don't know. He doesn't have enough fingers, though. How many fingers and... do I have? Uh, I assume goblins have five fingers. Hmm. I don't know, they might have a weak. Yeah, giant, like, 10 <laughs> foot tall guy wearing loose flowing rolls. And yeah, you see that inside there, this tent, there are, like, shelves all around it that have all sorts of, like, rolled up parchment in there. Ah, uh, scrolls, and, too. Um, okay. And yeah, as you approach it, and he, he maybe doesn't know his cry right, he looks down and he sees his, ah, welcome, welcome, how can I help you? I am uh, looking for a star chart. Oh, then you've come to the right place. This is the finest place to find astral plane star charts. Mm. Are you looking for somewhere specific? Yes. The whatchamacallit arch. The whatchamacallit arch? That's what we're looking for, right? She looks like Shazra. She's a Shazra actor. <laughs> I'm looking at scrolls and stuff like that. He's um, not paying attention. <laughs> or, uh, well, if you need my assistance, yes. <laughs> or, uh, what was it again? Uh, Shazra would probably remember that it's the Argent Gate. Efoot might remember too after thinking about it a little bit. Arch of what was it? The Argent, Argent. Gate. Argent, okay. okay, Argent Gate. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, the Argent Gate. Yep. Not an arch at all, unless it's an arch gate. You never know. Which Argent is actually a like it's it's basically like kind of a fancy word for silver. So it could be a silver arch gate. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Ah, the Argent Gate. Yes, we do have star charts that go there. Very popular place among certain denizens of or outsiders that come to this place. Really? More What's special about it. Yeah, why? Well, the Argent Gate is a place that... I'm surprised you don't know about this, wanting to go there, but I'll humor you. It's a place where people go because in order to get to other places, sort of like when people come here, but on a more grand scale, does the realm of Alceta. So it's like a super teleporter? Yes, it is also a place where enemies can meet on neutral ground. It is uh, neutral even even amongst gods. They will sometimes meet there and have discussions and not have to because anywhere else is aligned usually in one way or another. Hmm. I could see its uses. Although it sounds like it attract just about anyone. Yes, perhaps, but usually Alceta will let anyone in. And, uh, 
doesn't usually take side within conflicts. It's another reason why people like to go there to uh, to negotiate extra planar conflicts, shall we say. Mm -hmm. And he goes over, like, kind of looks like he's like counting through his like positions on like a shelf, and pulls out like a rolled up parchment. And he says, this one would be it. It'll be five gold pieces. All right. I look at E-foot. What? I pull out five gold pieces. <laughs> okay. He takes the five gold pieces and gives you the star chart. Okay. I make sure that Shawsworth doesn't get to handle it. No, you bought it. It's me. I'll just and make he, sure he, that you're close. He waits, to he waits uh, as you look, as you hold it, and says, feel free to look over it and make sure that it's what you will need. Um, I look at it. Does it look like what I need? I don't... You can roll a knowledge planes. Okay, all right. Um, let's, let's put my bardic knowledge to... Wait, can I use a lure ability? If you have, like, lore or astral plane or something like that, you could. Oh, it has to be specific. Well, if you if you have something that you think would make sense. No, I'm like a lore master, right? Doesn't that, like... What does oh, lore I don't master know. Do? Let me see what it does. I thought you were talking about, like, the skill, like, no. background skill lore. Because, like, if you have, like, lore <laughs> astral level... plane, you, can, you could get the information at a lower DC, basically. Oh, I can take a 10 on any knowledge skill... In addition, once per day, I can take a 20 as a standard action. I'm going to take a 20 and okay. on that. I'm going to dig real deep into my brain like Amarcia taught me. <laughs> i got to make sure this is correct because I don't want to look like an idiot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you bring it back and uh, like it breathes like this is fucking worthless. We were better <laughs> off listening to the Leviathan. Eh, throws it off the edge of the docks, floats into space. Okay, so what would you get taking 20 then? Hmm? What do you get on planes taking 20 then? Oh, right. Um, 22. Okay, uh, you are pretty confident that this is a usable star chart. Um, you think that you probably couldn't You'd think you'd have like a hard time navigating it yourself, but you think that someone like a breeze should have like this should be exactly what he needs. Okay, but there's a big picture of the Argent Gate on it, a big X saying this is where you're going. Yes, and there it looks like there's stuff like showing um like um astral like uh flows, like there's like kind of rivers of thoughts and quintessence and whatnot and mm -hmm. looks like there's some other landmarks uh noted on the map too that kind of set where it is uh, oh, you yeah. see you see something that looks like kind of the astral plane equivalent of like a compass that points like it gives you orientation basically um rather than being based off of that it's more like you will see the you'll see grotus this way and you'll see the spire over here and you'll see the uh plane of fire over here kind mm -hmm. of thing but almost like a constellation guide um as well that's like kind of listed there as a key so yeah um, you think it has you think it has all the information you would need because i spent five gold on this i'm coming back for tourism okay <laughs> all right i mean it's uh <laughs> you know i'm all for stimulating the economy Good trade is important. All right. Are there any scrolls you want to buy since you're here? Actually, kind of are. Oh, yes. We do sell scrolls, scrolls here as well. Yes. I am going to. I'm going to. I want to buy a scroll of invisibility. I want to buy a scroll of. Is it fly? 
And I have... I would like another scroll. Something a bit more, um... Uncommon. Okay. Uh, he might have it. What's the uncommon scroll you want? Although if he doesn't have it, someone else probably would anyway. <laughs> I would like a scroll of Force Anchor. Force Anchor? Yes. I want to be able to conjure an anchor of pure force that I could throw at someone that keeps them in place. The key being that it's an anchor of force. So intangible creatures wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to simply get away from me. Shaz was like a cat. She's well, pound something. You're in luck because Neela's uh, shop of maps and scrolls happens to have uh, happens to have those scrolls. Well, nice. thank you. Hello. Yeah. So, um, mm. if he has those, I'll pay him the uh, six hundred and seventy-five gold pieces for okay. three scrolls. And I'm gonna I'm gonna work on learning the two second level scrolls because I currently have second level spells. All right. Thank you. Hmm. Of course, that if you ever need more star charts while traveling within the astral plane, feel free to come back again, my friends, and I'm sure we will have what you are looking for. I also ask him uh discreetly uh if he has any interest in in magical items that are that are less than you know like less than safe and i i give him a wink in reference to cursed items hmm. well, i can't say that i'd be terribly interested i am specifically interested in things that can be stored on parchment things like scrolls books and maps okay i'll i'll keep that in mind i take the scrolls and i think okay well good job efoot yeah excellent now where are the others well that's fine we'll rendezvous with the others How have have we rested a day yet? Because I'm just resting until my drain's gone. Because that's what you do when you have drain at sixth level. Yeah. If we haven't, I assume we can. Yeah, you can find a um, like you can find uh, closer here to the docks, kind of where the all shoppings are. There actually are as well, like Some in ends. yeah, because this it's, is like right. where all like people are traveling here show up so did i know like this drain isn't like an hour and then it's gone because it's been longer than an hour right so it seems like it's probably a day long thing yeah i think it's several hours but it probably wears off like while you're wandering around the city but okay so but i'm resting not wandering around the city but yeah mm -hmm. maybe i do stay at an inn or somewhere somewhere i can just relax yeah, i mean if nothing else even if it's not for like a whole said, night if, even if like tactic was talking about it being like oh i'd be fine just camping out in the forest somewhere or whatever and it's like well there is technically a forest here it's like a yeah, weird, yeah, it's we a strange alien forest but you guys traveled through it when you guys went to the husk moat. okay so anyways that's um, that's what i'm doing and i probably told you where i was resting some random inn or something you're probably resting you're probably if you talk to my guy, my guy probably has like a random like room that he's renting somewhere since he's been oh, okay in this area for a little bit. So yeah. I stayed yeah. in your room while you're out walking around yeah. and stuff. Cool. Yeah. So that's that's where I am if you want to come get me. We'll just save, I guess that's where the party's gonna be staying. He has a big enough accommodations, maybe. <laughs> Okay. Uh, while you guys you are see a staying there, for a space whale. the 
the Shoki will say, well, before we leave for the Argent Gate, though, we should discuss what we expect to find when we come across Aradel. In life, he was a powerful wizard, is my understanding, right? Mm-hmm. As a spirit, as a, a uh, star dead, especially one who has been trapped in such a state for so long, I don't know that he'll still have access to all of his spellcasting abilities. However, he might still have some of his abilities. I do say that I don't know what his abilities are, but hopefully they will be at a reduced power, because that being that death should sap some of your your strength. I did I did come with prepared with a spell that should be able to at least pin him there and keep him where we want him, even should he be incorporeal. I don't believe he'll be incorporeal completely. Most most star dead are they're insubstantial to an extent, but Oh, let's still keep a corporeal thing pinned too. It's just insurance. Very good. But, but if he's a caster, then you know, expect magic. Yes, I mean, I don't know for sure that like, he'll be able to cast spells, but he might have other abilities that he's that he had uh, before he came here. He was a uh, undead, a... correct? Oh, we never saw him, not in uh... person. Yes, of course. Not. I think they told us that he had become uh, an undead. The people who saw. Of course. I don't know. I'll ask my, my sword yeah. if there's anything that he can tell me about Aerodel that we should know. Well, Eisenroll says, well, he when he killed me, it was chasing after trying to become a lich which I believe he was successful at doing. Mm -hmm. We can assume that, yes, that he did. He probably has some of the abilities and strengths that he gained when he became a lich then. Oh, really? Even after dying again, huh? Yes. When, the, when an astral form is created, it mimics the person as they were. Or is they, at least is how they perceive themselves. That is very interesting information. I'll have to remember. So, let's see. I've read about liches before. They're it's 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 not a topic that you can really miss when you're studying mm -hmm. the arcane. So if I'm if I'm if I know my my history correctly, then we need to watch out for a paralyzing touch. Oh. Oh, simple. I just won't let him touch me. But what happens if you get paralyzed? Do you stay paralyzed? You don't move. You're paralyzed. But for how long? Well, I don't know. I would imagine not very. It's a very long time. If you're a gap against a lich, then... Well, yeah, it's as long as you're alive, it. usually. Hmm. That That's a good point. Not very long, because you get killed, very long. usually. <laughs> okay. But, but since yeah. he's on... Well, we already know that, or suspect that his his uh his tether to the to the to the material world has been severed. So once Correct. we kill him here, that should be the end of him. Yes. Uh, if we're able to even just incapacitate him, I should be able to trap him in my staff mm -hmm. and take his take his soul back to the boneyard. Well, I asked Azenroll if there was any kind of magic that Aradel was particularly proficient in. They're a school of magic that he specialized. Uh, yes. He specialized in transmutation magic. Okay. I wonder how effective transmutation magic would actually be 
on the astral. I know a lot of it has, what you might call it, a fair amount of it is uh, used to enhance the self. But some things that transmute the uh, environment around you might not work here. Yeah, maybe not. There's not much. There's not as much stuff to transmute. Although I do know a particularly nasty and potent transmutation spell. Any any arcane caster worth their salt will know that uh, disintegrate is is an up there one. Yes. So yeah, everybody keep that in mind. Hmm. Yes. The worst that case we're is going to get disintegrated at sixth level. Yeah, it's a possibility. The worst case is that he might have spellcasting and yeah. throw to be throwing quick and disintegrates at you guys. Although I'm I'm hoping that But yeah. Pluto, this you're the GM, not Mantis. <laughs> <laughs> well, Death might I'm have channeling, I'm channeling my Mantis. His, whatchamacallit. <laughs> Death might have reduced his potency. Yes, as I said as I was saying, the Star Dead usually have the longer they're here, they they tend to have. I mean, you saw you saw the ones at the husk. Mo- Eventually, they sort of become aimless and drift around. My understanding, and perhaps this is somewhat related to him being a lich, he hasn't quite had the same degradation as some of the other ones do. According to the astral leviathan, he's pursuing some task, mm-hmm. but. Perhaps that's the only thing keeping him here. Perhaps he's uh, single-minded. At least that's how what the what the Leviathan seemed to be suggesting was that perhaps he's stuck in in a single-minded like desire to accomplish his whatever his one goal is, and and maybe he won't have, be able to do any. Maybe if he has any spells at all, he only has ones related to that goal. Let's hope. Hmm. Well, uh, I want to go buy a wand of cure light wound. Okay, you can do that. All right. All right. Anything I'll else you guys you. like to buy, you, you, can, you can find here as long as it is uh, under <laughs> what one hundred seventy thousand gold pieces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh... The, the wealth of a level twenty character, basically. It's just 750 gold, right? Yeah. Oh, no, a level 20 character would have way more than... Uh, 750 gold for 50 charge Cure Lab Wounds Wand, yeah. Yeah. And like I said, there is, like, spell cast... You can get spell casting up to ninth level in Yulgamot, like, so... Basically... Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Anything. Yeah, basically there's, there's, like, level 16 wizards and stuff hanging out in Yulgamot. At least from time to time. Maybe they're not there all the time, but yeah. Like you could find, you you might be able to find uh, from Neelov. You might be able to find like a scroll of wish. He might actually have one for sale there. <laughs> yep. Um. Yeah. Other than that, uh, I'll I'll rest when I do, and then. Yep. Yeah. You guys can go ahead and hit the night's rest button if you'd like. And. Uh... Excellent. I'm going to try and learn this scroll, too. Okay. Let's see. How much time is this scroll? Mm-hmm. Okay. Pop up. Spend more study spell. A spell slot. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I don't see wands in. Oh, uh, so if you want to create a wand in Foundry, what you do is you go to the spells, 
and you okay. drag you drag the spell cure light wounds into your inventory and it'll ask you is this a wand is this a scroll oh. or is this a potion and you'd say a wand uh, and, then, and then you can configure it from there okay i was wondering because i was looking for i've i was supposed to have cure mod potions on my person and i was like how the heck how the hell do you have these yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess you could do. You could also just like create a custom mm, item and name it that, and that'd yeah, be a, yeah. a real pain in the ass. But the easy way to do yeah. it is pull up. The, yeah, the easy way to do it is just pull up the list of spells and drag it on okay. your sheet. And, oh, that's. I was gonna ask. I just kind of forgot. Yeah. And you put in your inventory. It's smart enough to figure. Okay, you probably want one of these three things. So. Yeah. Okay. Because I was like trying to find just a potion. And I was like typing, fucking going to like every category, and then we were all talking. So I didn't really want to. Yeah, sorry. Ask. About it's it's intuitive no, once okay. you know, but if if you don't yeah. know, it's like how would you know? I guess. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, I'll be right back. Okay. And I uh. I, I got the spellcraft checked for adding a force anchor into my spellbook. Noink. Okay, yep, looks good to me. Uh, I think we got a little bit more in this here, yeah. Uh, I'll be right back, though. I'm going to grab something to drink real quick, and then... Yep. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if we'll do the fight with Aradel, but probably that's probably we'll stop probably right before it. So mm. I got a little bit in, like the travel there, basically. If he's even there. If he's True. even there. But I mean, you really think the ast that nice astral leviathan would lie to you? No. He's too old for that shit. Ocean. Okay. Yeah, since we have wands, I'll just say one for creatures. Oh, and, uh, when we're around the city, like when everybody's together, he do uh, my character does uh, take off his like cowl and hood. And you're letting uh, loose. Oh my gear! He yeah, lets he down his loose. hair. Yeah, well, not his hair, but uh, <laughs> he, he does that he thing where he takes his head around and it's locks. He has. He kind of has like a oh, short cut, like only. shortcut hair. Oh, kind okay. of like a fighter. It, that like doesn't happen. Hair. Ignore what yeah. I said. But uh No he doesn't anyways. He, if you guys look at him, he doesn't look like a normal like so he kind of looks like a half elf, kind of like Vandir, but he has uh he has tusks like an orc. Um he's a half orc, half elf. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Like half elf, half human, half elf, or just elf orc? He's an elf orc. Okay. So, like a combination of those two. I have a picture that I can send you. They're known as Val Valdor, Valdar, or something like that. You're like, Basically. I'm a half elf, half orc, half goblin, half. <laughs> Basically, picture uh, the orc guy from Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're the like. All right, I'm back. That's basically what he is. Listen, if an elf and an orc want to fornicate, that's that's fine. They can do that. What's going on? Yeah, my character. His character let down his hair. Yeah, and that that's how you get an elk. <laughs> elf and orc. <laughs> my my he, my char my no. character is a half orc, half elf. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. So pointy ears mm -hmm. and tusks. Yep. And that's why his skin's like the pale yellow um, color. 
Oh, okay. So you're not quite okay. like green. You're just kind of you know. yeah. You guys actually yeah. kind of know too who that is that his mother was the elf because uh, yeah. when you guys went to uh, she was a banshee. Well, that's what I was gonna say. She's gonna <laughs> a banshee. Maybe she's already a banshee. And Maybe you know. when you guys find her. Uh, but yeah, because you guys saw you saw her when you guys were at Silka's Seekers. Like oh. basically, he uh. When he Show like touched the, when he touched the little gem that she had, it projected what she looked like. Hmm. If you guys remember that from last session, I know it was a month ago, but yeah, sort of. So you guys kind of have a star chart that leads there too, but which is kind of like where he probably wants to go after this is dealt with. Um, and uh, at least the Shoki's gonna go with him, because that was kind of a deal he made of them. Sending a picture of what he kind of looks like into the Pathfinder channel. I think. Should I think I, yeah. Oh, in the chat channel? Yeah, the chat part. Open chat. Oh, neat. I see him. Yeah. Interesting hybrid. Yeah, so he doesn't have that long. He has more of a kind of like a army cut style. Yeah. He doesn't have that long hair, but that's what he looks like. Teeth of an orc, ears of an elf. It's just kind of like a hybrid that I've always thought would be kind of cool to play. Yeah. And cool, uh, cool. Th their their like stats is he gets plus two strength, plus two dex, and then minus intelligence and I think wisdom. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But there there's like a someone made a character sheet for him or made a, it was a yeah made it as a like a custom race basically it was, mm. actually it's funny because i was talking about this with um i was it was at a it was at a bar there's a and this is this is with the group that I ended up i'm playing a 5e game with them on um mm. alternating fridays mm -hmm. and uh that was one of the things i mentioned i was like oh yeah my pathfinder game like i usually am very lean about people i'm letting someone play something that was a forum post <laughs> yeah. you out of I'm like yeah because i know some people are also like super strict about what they allow what and, you allow yeah and i'm like i'm not like that at all i kind of like i old. feel like new like even yeah. when i was like new i was really strict but now i'm just like pfft, like whatever you know? well it's also if, like to me if it's like reasonable like if yeah. it's not like overpowered or oh, yeah, right, that's that. like I well, don't, that's I don't have any like super special abilities. Like I don't gain access to like all their like, that was traits one of the things and I stuff stressed like in that the conversation too that I was having. I was like, I trust my players to not abuse my trust, you know? Yeah. So that's I true. usually am very yeah. lenient about what I let people do because like I haven't had any of my players like abuse that and come in with some completely busted yeah, nonsense no, like, like all 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 really like i've seen some really strong one... stuff but nothing completely that's like breaking like mantis just happening yeah. to have the correct language at all yeah. times yeah what a coincidence no. well mantis <laughs> takes like 30 languages on i know it's just, <laughs> so. it's just always happened yeah oh it's, sphinx i, I know sphinx <laughs> so there's 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 like multiples of this ver of this like being like this creature made and i chose mm -hmm. the one that was like the weakest because there was one where it's like they get orc weapon proficiency and elven weapon proficiency oh. <laughs> i was like uh, i was like nah you get it, like i would just made it to where he doesn't even get either, either of them but he has like access to that's any the, feet that's, that's like orc or elvish, where, basically uh yeah. alternate racial traits would make a lot of sense too where you can yeah. say like pick one you know yeah, kind of thing. yeah, yeah. I mean, they do that already you, you, with a lot of like the standard races, but yeah, you're either or basically. Yeah. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of playing him as more of an elf. Like he was raised by his elf side, so he yeah. has like elven, more elven traits. That's actually uh, another side note too. One of the things I like in, um, I think, I think second edition has like leaned more towards this. I don't know it super well, but my understanding is they have like. Um, like ancestry separated from um, like your background basically 
So you yeah. can have um you can have like a character who was like a human raised by dwarves. And if you do that, you get like the dwarven weapon proficiencies and some of the stuff yeah. that dwarves get that's like baked into their culture as opposed to stuff that's baked into their physiology. Which I yeah. think is really good. Because you you're you're, you're you're raised by them, so you're trained mm-hmm. in their shit. And they have like, some stuff that's kind of yeah. like that in 1E, but it's not baked into races, so it's yeah. like feats and stuff you can take and whatnot. And I've I always said, like, even if, like, because the people are like, oh, do these, the orcs can't breed with elves. But it's like, come on. The, the humans can breed with everybody. And it was the same. I got, my parent wasn't like half orc, half elf. And somehow I got the, the, the orc and elf sides of it. But I just, they're sure. I mean, up. if humans can breed with elves and humans was, can breed with orcs, breed with and by orcs. the transitive property, elves can breed with orcs. Can breed with orcs, yeah. Lies. Right. I don't know enough about yeah. biology to dispute that. I don't think an elf right. would ever do such a thing. Well, that's yeah. That's Maybe it's the, a dark elf. Well, that would be a drow. Maybe there's a dark backstory behind it. There's like a drow yeah, orc somewhere. Or maybe it was non-consensual. Yes, that's yeah. what I was. That's, yeah, yeah. That's kind of where my backstory is going. I'm I'm working on it slowly, but that's basically the. The gist of Let it. Let me know when you have more of it because once oh, yeah, the, no, I'll, def- I'll definitely write. I'll, I'll, once I'll, the Aerodel thing is on. mad. I mean, I don't know. I guess it's possible the rest of the party says, eh, we don't want to help with that, but I'm kind of banking yeah. a little bit on them saying, okay, we'll stick around yeah. to help him out with I'll this work. since he helped with, our, with Aerodel. I have Sunday off, so I plan on doing more of the backstory on that on Sunday. Okay. And I'll, I'll send it to you when I get it completed otherwise i'll just wing it and make shit up wing it. Yeah. and i'll be yeah. like i hope you like it <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah no it's uh, I'll, I'll definitely work on uh on it on um, i have like the idea or like it's all in my head i just gotta, gotta put it down all right um so the next day i mean it's kind of hard to tell you have like enough of an internal clock that you can kind of tell it's been close to that but it's a little unusual because like there's not a proper day night cycle there's always just kind of like it almost feels like it's like permanently dusk um there is like the uh you can see like the the plane of fire and which is on the the outside of like the hell you know, Ew. The Get out of here, plant fire. <laughs> it's like floating off in the distance quite a ways away. It's the it, light it's sort source of, of this it's, flame. Yes, that's sort of like the it's sort of like the sun in the um in the astral plane. You know, you can also see Grotus hanging up in the sky, you know, like looking like Majora's Mask's moon. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, right. And it reflects light off that ref- it's coming off of the plane of fire, just like a normal moon would with the sun. But, um, but yeah, uh, when you think it's about close to 20 hours, um, you would remember that, uh, you guys did meet, agree to go meet, uh, a Bree. Yeah. Okay. We go there. And, uh, yeah, you get there and he says, I think I know how to get to the Argent Gate. Couple one of my friends kind of gave me some directions, but I'm hoping you guys have a star chart here. Okay, he looks at your star chart. He says, "This is exactly what I need." Yes, but it's mine. See my name right there. I put it there. It's mine. Hmm. Okay, I'll just ask you for it every time I need to look at it. Okay. Can I look at it now? Sure. All right. Thank you. <laughs> he, he looks at it, mm. examines it a little bit. And he says, "Okay, I think we can. I think we can get there. It shouldn't be too difficult. This actually might be quicker than to get here than it was to get to the astral leviathan." Oh well, that's good news. Because that took forever. Yeah, the whole ride. She's like, "Are we there yet?" (laughs) Probably. Yeah, (laughs) I can see Eva doing that. All right. 
Well, if you are ready to leave, then uh, we will. We can still be on our way. I'm ready to leave. Yes, sure, we are. Okay. Wait, am I non-drained, right? Because we is what yeah. a while. Okay. Yeah, your drain's I'm gone. Ready. You can hit the night's rest button if you haven't already. Um, time time passes here in this particular part of the astral plane. Uh, as you're leaving, you'd say a uh, side note. Time also passes within the Argent Gate, although it sounds like we're not going within the Argent Gate itself, but going somewhere in the shadow of the Argent Gate. I'm hoping we'll spot it when we get there. I shrug. I don't know. Yeah, hopefully we'll see what we're looking for. All right, well, let's be on our way then. All right. Okay. So he uh, he kind of directs you to you know focus your gravity off of the rock and uh, off of the rock away from it and drift off the docks and uh, once you guys are all on there he kind of guides you along the flow of thoughts that uh, circulate through the astral plane. All right, and you guys begin loading your way towards the Argent Gate. Um, so while you guys are in the way, I would like a perception from everyone. So in the way or on the way? The way. On the way. We're in the way in the of way. the thing we are perceiving. It is the way. Uh, perception. I am very good at seeing things within 60 feet of me. Oh, that's true. Oh, Billy you know my skill feet. points still aren't <laughs> set correctly. Oh, do you? Because I can't edit way? my sheet. I you know what's funny, stuff. actually, is the um, those the Callborn have a similar thing, too. They don't actually see. They sense things psychically as well. I'm a Callborn. Maybe. You're a Callborn that was just turned into a rabbit. Maybe. <laughs> it's separated, it's... separated from the hive. I mean, yeah, you'd think maybe, if you were maybe. a callborn, you would you would have known what they were thinking and and be able to detect everything they detected. But true, maybe I'm not a callborn. Okay, so yeah, you don't really run into any trouble, and yeah, it seems like uh, once you get a little bit further, you seem to kind of like hit this hit your stride, and you seem to be moving like pretty quickly through the. Uh, through the expanse of the astral plane. Um, and yeah, at some point you notice the, um, you do notice like a new landmark that's like, um, like, I would say it's coming over the horizon, but there's not actually a horizon. So like you kind of see it at first as like a tiny speck and it starts getting bigger. And yeah, you see this large kind of like, um, like silver looking structure that is um it looks like basically kind of like a large disc floating in the uh within the expanse as and you're oh it's and, final destination <laughs> <laughs> yeah the argent the argent gate um and yeah it looks like there are actually also some uh Tours? it looks like there is also like uh like rocks and stuff like floating around near it as well are there people here or other beings? Uh, you don't see any yet, but okay. you're still quite a ways away from it. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, he says we should be able to get to the edge of it very soon. I think if he's in the shadow of the Argent Gate, I would assume it would be on the opposite side of the Argent Gate from where the Plane of Fire is. Makes sense. So let's head that way. So he he kind of starts directing you guys, mm -hmm. like kind of to skirt around it to like the kind of the. I mean, there's not really directional, but the underside of it, if you assume the Plane of Fire is up. Yeah. Uh huh. The enemy's gate is down. And, uh, yeah, you 
he began you guys gotta be in kind of drifting under underneath it it slows down considerably because you guys aren't in like a in like a proper the proper current anymore but mm-hmm. um yeah as you guys are looking around um razok would be the first person who notices uh a like he sees there is a like a series of rocks that are kind of floating in like a little cluster and he thinks you you see like what looks like a skeletal figure moving around and like kind of hunched over these strange like arcane marks that are on that are like etched into the into the rocks It'll point it out to everybody. Okay. He says that yep. might that, yeah. He says that might be what we're looking for. And yeah, once it's pointed out, you guys kind of are, you know, you're probably still like a good like five hundred feet away from him at the moment. It doesn't seem like he's noticed you at all. It's just hunched over. It looks like he's doing something. Maybe he's studying it, maybe he's adding to it it's hard you can't tell from from this distance what he's doing but it looks mm, like it's closer like punched over it. okay closer. all right i'm gonna pull you guys on a map here in a second um, let me just get everybody on here first Should be pulling you this map. Hopefully it loads in. Looks like it's yep. It loaded. Okay. So yeah, you guys get within um you guys would be probably like fifty feet up from this as well. Uh from like this these uh rocks here. Mm -hmm. Um and also about a hundred feet away. So if you do Pythagoras, you're some further distance away, but I don't actually a hundred feet is probably pretty accurate because you're about eighty five 80 feet away horizontally, but, you know, 50 feet up. Um, mm-hmm. And, yeah, you, you see, like, the skeletal figure, and it doesn't look like he's paying any attention to what's going on around him other than something on this these arcane symbols. And he's just hunched over it. It looks like he's maybe, like, adjusting stuff on there. Like, he's, he's scratching at it. Uh, looks like he has, like, some sort of, like, Maybe he's using like a chisel or something. Mm-hmm. What do you do? I shoot him. <laughs> I cast a spell. What do you cast? I forgot tonight's rest. Uh, where's the bouton? Here. I am going to cast. Wait, this. I don't think this is gonna work, but it might work. Uh, we have to get really Art. close to him. Yeah, yeah. I will warn you if you want to do an, anything, any sort of like offensive spell right now, we will probably just have to end the session because we're not going to do the combat. But if there's anything I'll, else, you I'll do it anyways. Do. I'm casting Aura of the Unremarkable. Mm, okay. I don't know if it will work. I don't, think, I don't think that's a combat spell, right? So it is not. Uh, it doesn't work to cast it for some reason. Uh, Unremarkable. Damn. There's insufficient charges left. What? Did you night rest yourself? Yeah, I have four out of four casts available. Uh, unsure. <laughs> okay, I well, I cast this spell, and I would love to give you the text. Uh, I looked it up. I can see it. Let's there. see here. <laughs> so annoyed. Yeah, you showed me this. I remember you, when you got this spell, you you showed it to me. You're like, I'm gonna take this spell. Yeah. I just don't know why. 
Why does it say there's insufficient charges? What does that even mean? I don't know. I've ran across that before too, but it doesn't make sense. But that's to with me arrows. Because... Yeah, it also makes sense to me why I would do it on your spells when you've been casting other spells just fine. Yeah, so, so, something's wrong with how it's set up, I think. For that particular spell, maybe. Yeah. Let me look. I have spells. not. I will see if I can figure it out later. But anyways, 30-foot emanation around us. Creatures see whatever we're doing as, even if they're weird actions, they see it as innocuous. Okay. So, if we can get in range of him and he fails to save within, like, 30 feet, even if we're, like, inspecting his runes and, you know, anything short of, like, attacking him, then he won't... He'll think it's completely normal. Okay. Maybe. It might not work on him, though, because it's compulsion mind-affecting. Unless he's not affected by mind-affecting or he beats the save or he has SR or we attack him. Mm-hmm. But I want to use the spell, so I'm using the spell. Okay. Seems fine. All right. Uh, Shoki says that I believe that's him. Awesome. Well, yep, I'll just drawing my sword. He looks more undead then. Than the you. memory that we saw of him, but I guess that wasn't him in, in his life. Draw my bow and knock an arrow. I did it. Hey, it was, it was marked as a prepared spell instead of an unprepared spell. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I suppose that would do it. I wonder why it defaulted to that i guess it's because i hit a button on accident oh okay it didn't it, it was probably me it was probably user error is what you're saying yes <laughs> yes okay fair enough uh yep. read all what it does you guys are it doing probably won't prep. do anything here he he shifts over a little bit but doesn't seem to look up it looks like he as he's walking along he he never looks up from any any uh role that determine what those marks are like uh knowledge distance? arcana would work um i'd also give it to you Ned. knowledge planes at a higher dc if you don't have knowledge arcana but knowledge arcana is going to be the easier dc aha oh my god uh i don't know if efoot even knows it even rolling that nat 20 <laughs> but billy you think these look like they are a what would be some sort of teleportation or plane shift kind of effect that he's trying to do mm. probably like a very specific targeted plane shift kind of thing because like normally plane shift doesn't take you it takes you to a plane but it doesn't necessarily take you to a specific location this is like a landing pad kind of yeah like he's it's almost like he's trying to make a portal basically focus, to a specific like focusing it Mm -hmm. It looks like he's trying okay, to make a portal I... to a specific place on another plane. I tell the party in their heads so he can't hear. Okay. And I say... Right. He looks kind of litchy, so he's probably immune to my spell. Uh, but I think we need to stop him, whatever he's doing. It can't be good. Oh, yes. We will. And to see if I have any other like precast buff spells. I this could screw us, but I could cast silence. This might be a strange question, but do you think it's worth asking if you'll come with me willingly? <laughs> Ask the chunky. I um, you never heard. I think there's as much chance of that as my mud buddy being able to fly through the astral plane. I could try fascinating that, Your buddy, buddy probably could fly through the astral plane pretty effectively. How? Really. He has no wisdom score. <laughs> what, he has, a zero, he has a dash for his wisdom score? Uh, I mean, it, I guess it's equal to an unseen servant. Maybe. Mm, 
that. I don't really need to know what uh, what if what okay, this score anyway. is, so I'm not going to spend the time to look that up right now. As tempting as it is for me to go down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Um. I. I don't. Yeah. I. I don't think he'll come willingly. I say. Hmm. Shame. That's usually my first course of action when trying. Yeah, you to can find still distract him with the question. Hmm. I'll distract him with distraction. I'll I'm distract him, him anyway. so that you can set up to distract him for me after that fails. Wait, how does distraction work? All right, my guy will start moving. Well, closer. he seems pretty distracted right now. Yeah, so. the Shoki will also start moving. Well, that's true. You guys right. could decide to like try to get a jump on him. I guess that's that the question here. Do you want to get a jump on him, was. or do you want to talk to him? Jump well, I can't actually see him right now, actually, it turns out, and I can't see... I can only see this close oh. rune, not the far rune. Yeah, that's I true. Realize. But still seeing this one, you can tell that he's... you think he's setting up some sort of teleportation or plane. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, at the moment, he doesn't seem to notice you. You can kind of like freely set up where you'd like to go. But if you guys would like to set up like an attack on him and just do that. Like I said, we're probably not going to run this combat tonight. I say we decide next session. Yeah, let's yep. So that we myself. know what our plan was at the beginning of next session instead of deciding a plan now and then trying to remember it next session. I'm just going to start approaching him menacingly. Yep. My guy's oh, set boy. up for being an archer. <laughs> I'll just be a bunny on the rock <laughs> or something. Okay. Uh, Shazo's going to approach him menacingly. He will, when you get like close enough, probably to where you are there, he will actually look up. He'll actually finally notice. And be like, who are you? I hold up the sword. Where did you get that? <laughs> um... Are you one of my followers? I don't recognize you. Yeah, totally. Uh, not unless you used to teach at the uh, the academy in Cheliax. I don't even know where that is. Then the answer's no. <laughs> if you're not one of if you're not one of my followers, then just. Stay out of my way. I have a very important work to do It'll, to the benefit of all you people. Oh, Who yeah, you what you do? You I, I ask him, oh, you don't recognize? You don't recognize him? What are you talking about? I say, look, it's it's your uh, your fellow wizard you betrayed. I, again, I, I point the sword at him, like the sword that pointed Look, I don't know who you are or how you got that weapon that proto failed prototype of mine, but I don't have time for this. I have very important work I must finish here. Oh, he doesn't like that. I'm so close, I can tell. I'm nearly there. I should have probably have this done within another, maybe, uh, probably a couple of days. He he starts looking back down, starts etching again on it. Mm. All right. Well, there's no uh, there's no sense hesitating. But how can you be done in a couple of days if time doesn't flow? I mean, you can roll uh. You can roll a sense motive as well, I guess, if you want. I don't know if anybody in this party is like really adept at sense motive. No. Let's see. We don't have a Cliff Salazar in this party. Actually, my guy's pretty decent. Not super, but no. Oh. Ooh, I guess I'll try. Yay, one. Ooh. No. Nope. All right. <laughs> You're not getting much. Yeah. Nah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I like. I like. Said unless you just want to talk to him some more, we'll probably just pick um, this up for a combat next session. 
No, you know, I'm, I'm gonna just... yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna enhance my weapon and get ready to uh to attack him. Yeah. Okay. Uh well like I said, we'll we'll pick this up next session then. So Alright, sounds good. We'll put a stop okay. to whatever it is he's doing. I will say, whatever he's been doing, he's been doing it for a long time. So he has. You maybe get the sense of even with nobody passing the sense motive that uh even though he says he's gonna be done within a couple days probably. He's, he's probably crazy, basically. He's probably never going to figure it out at this point. Couple of days on what plane of existence are we referring to? <laughs> right. That's <laughs> that's one point as well. But yeah, he's he's keep in mind uh he disappeared uh into the astral plane. Like the last time when you guys talked to Pedrick about it, he says, "Oh yeah, I haven't seen him in 10,000 years." So he's been doing this for probably most of that time. Dedicated. Mm -hmm. All right, I will talk to you guys next time. Okay, sounds good. Uh, next session will be on the thirteenth, so hopefully everybody can be there for that for the big fight against uh, Aradel. At least from now. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um. Uh, so I'm far, I think everything. I can. Who might be missing for that one? Okay, well, if uh, Ron's the only person missing, then we'll probably just run it as normal. As long as I have, probably as long as I have four, three to four people, I'll probably run, run the combat, but. I will talk to you guys later. Okay, have a good night. All right, yep, take Bye -bye. care. Good night, and thanks. Well, yeah. Hope everyone had fun. <laughs> yeah, I had fun finally getting to yeah. Eric at all, even though nobody wanted to talk to him. I mean, <laughs> Casey couldn't tell. I'm like, if I want to talk to him, I I could tell, and it's just like I don't know what to say. Like we're supposed to stop him. Yeah. Like. Hey, can can you come with us, please? You're under arrest. You could ask him questions, is what I was really getting at, and try to get him to get you give you information. Yeah.